Hello, everybody, and welcome or welcome back to Monster of the Week, something that we have done once before, but it's still a little bit weird and different for the channel. But if you don't know what it is, it's more or less a tabletop RPG system, similar to like a Dungeons and Dragons, but you don't need to know as much about the nitty gritty to understand what's going on. It's more about telling a story in kind of like a Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Scooby-Doo, unnatural sort of way. And we had a lot of fun doing this. This was recorded live back kind of on Halloween. And I just wanted to showcase it for you guys because I just really like Monster of the Week. And I would love to cover it more if you guys like this sort of thing. But hey, in we go. But so we got three hunters today. Rhapsody, who is? Mads the Spooktacular. I can okay. tell you something additional if you'd like. Sure. Yeah, go for it. Uh, Mads uh, was a kid who was obsessed with magic and wanted to learn sleight of hand, but found learning sleight of hand too difficult and instead decided to learn the occult black magics uses them to a similar effect of conjuring small, you know, carny kind of effects. Travels with a carnival and the carnival try to go from town to town solving problems that don't necessarily appear to the normal populace on the surface. Okay. And uh, I guess one feature that we're rolling with uh, for people that have played Monster of the Week is uh, we have it so characters can have like one weird thing about them. Is your character just has the ability to use magic? Is that you're you're just special? Uh the special, uh the specialty rather of my character is a uh, problem solver. When they chat to someone or observe them for a few minutes, the keeper will tell me what their biggest problem is right now. Oh. Okay. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This game is filled with oh yeah, by the way, you have to pull something out of your butt. But it goes both ways. Yes. <laughs> it goes both ways <laughs> in this one. But I like that about it. Yeah, so uh, I guess for people that are used to my campaigns, usually I do maps and, like, grids and all sorts of stuff. I've done away with that, so we just have illustrations for the different locations, kind of. Uh, I didn't have that much time, so it's only, like, three, four, technically. Uh, and so... Uh, Rather than have everything get thrown away, we're just going to swap between whatever scene makes the most amount of sense, and we're not going to have to worry about, yeah, where are they in the facility? Uh, so, Rito, you want to intro your character real quick? Yeah, I'm not going to go quite as, as in-depth because I don't have quite as much on it, but I am Frank... Oh, God, I didn't even realize it was triple... Oh, triple Fs. It's Franklin Fates the Flake. That was not... <laughs> that was not intentional. I love it. I like it. That was not it. intentional, but I do love it now. Uh, so basically the flake in this game being kind of like more of the, the skeptic or the kind of person who, you know, I can see how this all fits together. That kind of person. Uh, he's just kind of got like a, a dusty leather jacket. He's wearing sunglasses more than he should, wearing them indoors when it's probably making things worse, but you wouldn't know. Uh, and yeah, he's just, he looks looks quite serious. That's it. All right. And what's your character's like weird ability, or do you want to yeah. save that for later? No, I can say it now because it's I. Uh, it is the trust your gut. I think I, I went with the same one that I did for my main. It's character. it's solid. It it also like there's only a couple that make sense for characters that don't have magic. So yeah, it's trust your gut. It's basically the ability to just be like, I wonder what I should do right now, or like what direction should I go, and then if I roll well, wander just has to kind of give me a a tip like a video game basically <laughs> yeah so which is nice I, I guess one one difference that i should make also for monster of the week is that the dm is less adversarial in monster of the week than it is in like dungeons and dragons uh so specifically i am supposed to give these guys clues and i can never like tell lies i have to be 100 percent honest which i mean is just a good policy for people uh tabletop rpgs uh but in this one it's a much more like um specifically i'm trying to help them on their goal uh it's more about possible. the story and, than like the the goal yeah. is a good story the goal is not to win yeah i like that i like that. yeah it's a nice system uh let's see and jonas oh hey who are you uh i am arnie the mundane i googled the name of most boring names in existence and arnie came up so Arnie's out there Poor Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Poor. Uh, I a little bit about the mundane. Uh, you heard about how monsters only pick up on people with crazy powers who can fight back on even terms. 
Yeah, me neither. But but H, I ended up in this monster hunting team, so I got to do what I can. I am an Uber driver uh, by day and a plumber by night. It's my hobby. Um, I also collect crickets uh, as a <laughs> as a hobby as well. Very like the most mundane. My favorite my favorite food is like plain white toast uh, with no butter. Um, it, it's it's a good time. <clears throat> The, the butter kind of just assaults my palate. It's just kind of yeah, too I don't spicy. Like, yeah, too, the it's, it's, too spicy. It's too spicy. Too <laughs> spicy. Uh, and uh, my uh, special ability is uh, weird science. So you have uh, when you create or adapt a device to analyze or deal strangeness, say what it will do, and roll plus. Weird. I want to meet this guy. For being mundane, I do want to meet him really badly. <laughs> like, has a cricket collection and can make science contraptions out of nothing? Like, Ooh. seems kind of nice. <laughs> not, well, not out of nothing, well, but. Why is he an Uber driver with that? Thing? I know. Also, did you say that the plumbing was your hobby? Plumbing <laughs> was a hobby. Yeah. <laughs> I do it. I, I plumb for sport. <laughs> <laughs> I like the challenge of it. <laughs> he is a competitive plumber. Yeah. He doesn't do yeah, it professionally. I... He goes only for, racing. He goes for plumbing, PDs. speed running. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Toy, <laughs> unclog does. percent. Yep. <laughs> There's a real game there somewhere. There, I'm sure there is. <laughs> not one I want to play in real life. Arnie can play it, but Arnie not Jonas. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Well, with that, uh, I guess to intro this campaign and lead us in, you guys were all. I don't want to say hired. No one has reached out to you specifically, but you did get a tip that a uh, a local corporation in in whatever city you're based in. Uh, I'm not going to world build that hard. Uh, some funky's going on. You know, corporations are always a little shady with their dealings. Uh, but in this case specifically, uh, there's the implication that. Oh, give me a second. Okay, good. I, for a second, I didn't see my microphone. I'm like, oh no, did I go mute? Uh, <laughs> but. Uh, for this one, this corporation has been, I guess, uh, anonymously accused of using dark magic to control its employees, which is, of course, a little bit more than law enforcement can deal with and a little bit more, I guess, your purview. Uh, I'm assuming, Rhapsody, you're a little bit more on the clue. I don't know how yes. about, well, I, I guess uh, this will lead to a couple of questions. So, Rhapsody, your character probably found out about this clue first and... I guess as part of that, got the ball rolling. How are you guys getting into this building? Because I, I'm just going to let you get in however you, you decide rather than uh, drawing it out on the outside. You've managed to get in the building. You don't have to get in together. Uh, you can get in separately. And I want to know how you all got in and if you know each other going into this. And like if you're working together, if it's more of like a, you recognize somebody else in the building that doesn't belong. So I don't know any one of them directly. However, I was told a fortune by uh, one of the people in the carnival who is actually skilled at fortune telling uh, that a Uber driver named, uh, sorry, what exactly was the name for your character Arnie. again? Oops. Arnie. 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 That an Uber driver named Arnie would be deeply important to my future. Uh, so I carry that information with me, but while I was working the uh, fake, uh, the fake, uh, what's the word for it? Uh, I literally just said it, fortune, fortune telling, telling booth. Uh, one of the janitors from this corporation came in and was talking about how everyone's just leaving things all over the ground. They're wandering around like zombies in there. Why are they so dirty constantly? I need a break from this. And starting to get a hint that maybe this isn't an entirely normal source of degradation within the company, I convince him to give me his uniform so that I can perform his job for a day and give him a little holiday. Okay. I also use this to sneak into the building. Okay. So I assume you're taking Arnie uh, as your Uber driver to work. Is that the connection between no. you two? No. Oh, so I don't that, know Arnie's, no. Arnie's my Uber oh. driver. Oh. Otherwise. I uh, see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I would say my character being kind of the flake, being a frequenter of like message boards and things here and there the thing all about like noticing these weird little patterns here and there maybe just hearing some things on the news that just like huh that's a little bit strange so i i might as well pause for a hot second uh because i might as well give backstory you know about this corporation it's kind of on the up and up it's one of those like 
you know, new ones that everybody's talking about of like, yeah, invest in this one. It's, it's really good money. And like the, it's been in the news, it's been in the papers. It's always been kind of funky because you really don't know what they do at this place. Uh, but it's been that like hot money corporation that people have been talking about for about a year. Uh, I, I'm going to say kind of the FTX style of yeah. like, what <laughs> yeah, do they I do? I, I would say that this is the kind of thing where it, Franklin probably was initially skeptical due to just like, I don't like this. So I'm going to find a reason why I hate this. Like I want to, I need to find a reason why this is suspicious. And then like slowly, eventually finding like, Oh, wait a minute. This is actually, there's actually something that feels very off here. And then Jonas is my Uber okay. driver. I mean, Arnie. Yeah. <laughs> Arnie. Okay. J Jar Jonas is my Uber driver, and Arnie is Franklin's Uber driver. <laughs> okay. That's pr that's pretty much my mundane history. Uh, I just <laughs> out of the uh, luck of the draw, I happened to to pick up uh, Franklin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To drop him okay. off at Umbrella Corp. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. So <laughs> so uh i i guess just to clarify so your character is sus of the company how are you getting in like what was your cover story what did you convince them that you are or are you just walking in and just hoping for the best well i i am a cryptographer i would imagine my goal would have been to try and imply like you know try and see if they needed any work of a cryptographer trying to decipher codes or something. It seems like the kind of thing they would oh. be interested in. I guess that would be. Okay. Otherwise, okay. he's so walking in right case, in. Okay. In that case, you've been hired on the spot, actually. Okay. You are the newest intern. Great. I, <laughs> what a nice. <laughs> I mean, and I guess I need a ride to work. I don't have a car. It says on my character yep. sheet, I don't have a vehicle. So. So, in that case, uh,. I didn't have to roll for my job. Jonas, are you just following him in? So, so yeah, you, no, you, you do it. <laughs> no, no, go, go ahead. I, I was going to say okay. that Arnie, Arnie has a minor crush on Franklin. That's, oh, and okay. Franklin has, uh, you know, first day, he's got his paper boxes for his desk. Yep, he's I got, got a very heavy a briefcase, briefcase, like, I have two. Yep. Actually, I have two very heavy briefcases. <laughs> yep. So I I have offered out of the kindness of my heart to help Franklin with with uh, I was gonna make a innuendo uh, with uh, with his stuff with with his stuff <laughs> with, with, help. What were you gonna say? <laughs> okay. With with <laughs> never mind. All right, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Fine. Uh, Not right away. Really welcome uh, to that five star. I'm, I am <laughs> going to be carrying. Yes, exactly. Uh, my Uber rating is tanked lately because I keep bringing up the cricket selection or collection <laughs> oh, you know that I have. So I'm trying. Not only do I have a crush on Franklin, but also trying to get that five star baby. Yeah, that okay. would. So I, I'm, car I'm carrying. I'm carrying his equipment in for. Yeah. Him. And Franklin knows that this is not like normal Uber stuff to go <laughs> above and beyond and to literally carry stuff in, but he's so vain that he's just like, yeah, I mean, I don't want to have to lift it. And he's saying a lot of sweet things to me. I don't mind hearing that. Okay. So in that case, here, let me hide some stuff. I might as well actually show you my, uh, the art that I've done. You'll have to pardon the fact that it's just in Photoshop. Uh, so can you guys see that via the live? Oh, yeah. Uh, wow. Yes. Yeah. Would okay. it be so, okay if I captured this, by the way? Yeah, go for it. Uh, maybe zoom in a little bit so you don't get the UI. I yeah, yeah, totally yeah. forgot I wasn't showing this to you already. Just got to figure out how to... One sec. Yeah, no worries. I think I got to move the line around would, on my I screen anyway. I know people anyway. would like to see it. Yeah. I put together all of these visual aids so you guys can see what I'm doing, and uh, my audience is the only people that get to enjoy it for a moment. Oops. <laughs> so good. Gonna oh, center it on my audience. End. Yeah. I have done a center. Just about there. Oops. All right. I got it ready. All right. So probably shouldn't have put as much time into this one because you guys... Uh, so I guess I'm going to start with uh, with... Jonas and Rito. So Jonas, you're you're helping out, uh, which means you've effectively become the second newest intern at this place, uh, or at least you're just rolling with it because uh, you don't want to leave Franklin alone. Uh, I assume. 
Unless yeah, you have like an objection it. to that. No, I do not at all. I would. <laughs> He's falling closely behind. I would behind. give up. I'm giving up my Uber career to follow Franklin. <laughs> all right. Uh, so you've, I mean, probably not much of a career if you're a plumbing speed runner. No, no. I'm plumbing is just the, Uber is a hobby. hobby too. Yeah, plumbing was the hobby. Yeah. No, no. Plumbing's for fun. Yeah, but you also make tech catch. <laughs> it wasn't really a Your following mother... on Twitch. Your mother was always saying, you can make money with that plumbing stuff and you're like no it's a hobby that'd ruin it <laughs> <laughs> and there's no challenge yeah, i exactly. wouldn't enjoy it anymore okay so i'm gonna flip it uh so you guys you guys are brought in uh with pretty much no training no preamble uh there's a very short seminar where they go over the basics of you know how to get your 401k after three years of working there and benefits and dental they really care about dental for some reason uh i haven't worked a corporate job so i'm just winging this but it's everything you would expect about like a very brief corporate training uh they kind of run the gamut but it kind of like blends in your mind like they weren't really into it and in fact uh they seem kind of unenthusiastic uh they're glad you're there there's i think maybe three four other interns uh, rolling in it actually seems like this place is has quite the volume of new employees you you can kind of see who is an intern because uh there is effectively a, a very strict dress code so i'm going to switch this to the interior scene and mm. i will give you a view of kind of the two types of people you're interacting with here nothing suspicious uh, here yes <laughs> oh, uh, that is so, so good dude so good yep. i I am very proud that I can draw cubicles. Uh, That's true. <laughs> That's uh, my real life desk right there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I was thinking about you with this one. I, I was wondering if you were just going to go with the I'm the IT guy. And I'd just be like, all right, lead <laughs> us in. Uh, so anyway, uh, interns don't have suit jackets. And uh, they also have like a little name name tag that just says intern on it. You guys mm -hmm. have them too. Uh, whereas the regular employees wear suits and they get access to the coffee machine. That's a perk that you unlock after a month. Uh, so oh, no coffee nice. for you quite yet. Uh, but so I'm going to hide those because you're not closers. interacting with any of them. What was that? I hear coffees for closers, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, I guess I didn't draw it here, but there are uh, quite a number of coffee machines all over the place. Uh, so <laughs> How, uh, what's the coffee machine per cubicle ratio? Oh, it's like maybe one to somewhere between six and ten. Like, oh my. It's not excessive, <laughs> wow. but there's a it's, lot. It's pretty, it's, yes, fairly excessive, not crazy excessive, yes. Uh, And so after your very brief, like maybe two hour orientation, you are led to your cubicles. They have a cubicle for everybody. everybody. In fact, uh, I don't know how tall either of your characters are, but at some brief moment, you're just elevated enough, you know, maybe go, going down the stairs into the building. Uh, there's a lot of cubicles. Like, you can't you can't even count them. There are so many. It seems to kind of extend uh, for an unsettling distance uh, to the point where, yes, atmospheric fog is very much a reality in this room that you are now working in. Uh, so it is expansive. Uh, and they sit you down. And more or less just turn on the computers and have you start fiddling with spreadsheets. It's uh, it's confusing at first, but you get the hang of it. You're mostly just moving uh, values from one sheet to the next. Nothing terribly unusual. And, you know, before long, you're kind of into a, a rhythm with it. Uh, and that's it. You're inside and hmm. no one suspects you because uh, you're just an employee like everybody else. Great. So when do you start acting out? Uh, I would say first I have um. Well, also wait. What does Arnie? How do you? How does Arnie get away with not leaving the building? I do want to know. As or <laughs> unless you got hired on the spot as well. Is that what was implied? No, I did. I did. Yeah. You, wait, yeah, I was, they, yeah, I was they hired, hired the, the Uber spot. driver on the spot as well. Okay. All right. So they're, they're, you, it seems like they're very desperate for people. Yeah. Yes. So. Uh, so Franklin got the interview beforehand, and it was very brief, just over the phone. Oh, and Jonas you know, what's your name? What's gotcha. your experience? That's so and good. then, well, you kind of were too. Uh, there was barely an, an interview, 
and then Jonas just walked in with you and nobody even asked his name. Hmm. <laughs> they yeah. seem, I mean, half of the cubicles, eh, maybe not half. It's like three quarters of the cubicles you pass are filled. So it seems like they actually do have room for people. Uh, so there is a reason why they're hiring more. I uh, They got some cubicles to fill. Franklin's probably grumbling to himself at the desk thinking like, like I'm so I'm an accomplished like you know accomplished cryptographer and just the Uber driver slash hobbyist plumber <laughs> got the job immediately. Here I was thinking like I don't need it doesn't need to be impressive that I got the job quickly, but I just I guess I thought and he's feeling a little bit <laughs> down on himself. <laughs> but uh, I would say as the flake, I also have this move called connect the dots. Which okay, I has for for the purpose of this mission only has one question from it that would end up even being useful anyways. But more or less, at the beginning of the mystery, I can roll my dice and add sharp. If I get a ten, I get to ask three questions. One of only one of which is going to be relevant. Seven through nine, I can ask one question. Um, is that something I could do right now? Would you say that this is probably the beginning of our mystery? Oh yeah, this is the beginning of the mystery. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna roll my dice and see if I can even get it. I got a let's see what is my plus sharp. Okay, well I got a ten, which means I get to ask three questions. But like I said, oh it's, boy, damn. it's um, is there anybody? First of all, is there like a superior around me, someone who, who was like, doing the quote unquote interviewing? Okay, so I'll, I'll pause you for a hot second just to explain the rules for everybody else. Uh, so the way this game works is you roll two die six, and there's effectively uh, three thresholds. Just outright failure, which is anything below seven. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of a mixed success, which is seven to nine. And then just an outright success, which is 10 plus, which is usually you succeed at whatever you're trying to do, and often you get a bonus. Uh, and so uh, there are a bunch of kind of standardized moves. But each class also has specialized moves, so the flake gets to connect the dots, whereas Spellslinger and Spooktacular might have something else, and we will see those as they come by. Uh, so in this case, he rolled a 10, so he actually gets to hold three, which means he gets to hold on to three questions that he can use whenever he wants uh, to ask me a relevant question, such as, when and where will the next critical event occur? What does the monster want from this person? And so on and so forth. Uh, mm -hmm. so what was your question again? Just to go back so to it. I hadn't gotten to the question yet, uh, ah, but yeah. I would say, I think that, oh, oh no, no, yeah. to, is there you... somebody who interviewed, is, who interviewed me near yes. me still? So I guess so I, I have two relevant questions then maybe. Okay. So I haven't exactly drawn any of them, uh, separately, but I might as well turn them on. Uh, so you find, uh, this guy, he's a little taller than the others. Oh, no, <laughs> I cannot extend him up. Uh, unextendable. Little, you know, he's, yeah, he's unextendable. So you do notice that after a certain point, a lot of these people start to kind of match each other, uh, both in like dress and general countenance, uh, slick back hair, very like almost arc business, uh, in a uncomfortable way. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, this is the guy that was droning on with your, uh, with your orientation. Uh, okay, and you can you can kind of tell he ah, his suit's a little nicer. His tie, you know, it's got a little bit more of a shine to it, and his coffee cup is bigger. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So maybe this is the appropriate person to ask my question to. So another thing worth mentioning on Monster of the Week is, as I ask this question, Wander does have to tell the truth, but he doesn't have to tell the whole truth. Just basically, Correct. no lie can come out. Is the thing. So I am going to ask, is this person connected to the current events more than they are letting on? I, that's all I got. Yes. Yes. Okay. He, uh, Franklin eyes this, the unstretchable man. He, he squints <laughs> in his direction. He goes, this guy, plumber hiring son of a... And, <laughs> <laughs> and the, the next question I ask would be, uh, and this is maybe, a, this is a big one which would be when and where will the next critical event occur? And that's very general, I guess. Oh, I have to think about that. Yeah, that's a, it's a weird one. Uh, overtime. Overtime. I think that's fair. 
and maybe I can fudge this last one, maybe. Uh, okay. Can I ask, what does this monster want from this person, and can this person be me? Uh, to, I mean, I'm assuming it's to work. Can, I, can you even ask that if you don't even know? I think the answer what is... the monster is. Yeah, I think that's the thing, is because I don't know if it's the monster, so... Yeah, I, I feel like that's maybe a little too prescient for the yeah. moment, but I don't know the mechanics on this one. Which is why I, I, I think he, I'm cool with throwing away the third one, is what I was saying. So I, I will say you can hold that and ask that again when you have some Great. more information. All right, I will hold on to that. One, connect the dots. Great. So that's that. That move is done. Okay. All right, over time. So, over time. Okay. So... You've more or less given this guy the sidelong glare, and are you just hanging out at your desk otherwise? Yeah, I think so. I think I look or I examine my surroundings. Like, okay. for, so, I mean, yeah, just things of note. So, uh, first thing you notice is, of course, they've put all of the interns together. So, you and Artie are uh, cubicle neighbors, uh, as well as just some other interns. <laughs> uh uh, no one specifically really stands out. It seems like everybody else is kind of like a, in the intern batch. It, it's just kind of an eclectic group. Uh, you do know that this place is a, a prolific hire, and go figure, they've got plenty of space for new hires. And the work is as mindless as it is easy. Like, mm -hmm. a dog could potentially do this if you could figure out how to get it to operate a mouse. Mm -hmm. uh, it is that boring and brainless. So whatever you're doing must be just really basic grunt work and maybe they do the more interesting stuff later the place is pretty quiet you don't actually hear much chatter there's kind of a general din but it seems to be mostly like typing and clicking and uh, coffee percolating uh that actually is probably <laughs> the the greatest source of the din uh because yeah it seems like those coffee machines are just kind of running in general uh and it seems like just judging by the way people move this might be one of those places where you're only supposed to work nine to five, but a lot of people do like the nine, nine, six or worse uh, for one reason or another. There is very much uh, bonus pay for working after hours, uh, you know, time and a half or even double time on holidays. Uh, so, you know, it's good money if you are, are specifically looking to make uh, a buck and you might not have the education required to get a job anywhere else. And honestly, the pay is pretty good. So uh, you do notice that yeah, not a whole lot of workplace socialization, but it is also like maybe 11. Uh, it hasn't even hit lunch yet. Mm -hmm. All right. I would like to clarify just very quickly that <clears throat> Arnie is loving this atmosphere. I was going to okay. say, I, I was going to say <laughs> that Franklin was going to peek over the cubicle at Arnie to see, like, because he's pro Franklin's probably at the part where, like, you know, my job being like finding distinct patterns and hidden messages finding this extremely repetitive pattern grating immediately but looking over at franklin or looking franklin looks over at arnie and uh, see, so sees I, him typing away with a big grin i, I yeah, arnie with, loves it <laughs> i'm gonna go with a soul call and say that uh arnie had specifically shown franklin like in an attempt to uh impress franklin one of these speed plumbing videos uh, that's, that's it is the same level of like passion and gusto, uh, just chipping away at these spreadsheets. Yes, <laughs> you're going for time. Franklin. Yeah, check out my YouTube channel. Uh, plumbers are speed running. Uh, running is spelled R U N N I N. <laughs> right now, I got look. I got 13 subscribers. I'd love a 14th. Just saying. I I don't think we can look at that right now. I, I look at all the other monitors to see if literally anyone else is doing anything other than the exact same thing. Nope, everybody is just doing data entry. So I don't think uh, we can do that right now, and also I wouldn't do it anyways. It, are you sure? <laughs> can I get your... What about you just hook me I, up with your WhatsApp, okay. and I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you. I, you asked for my WhatsApp so many times on the ride over here, Arnie. I... <laughs> <laughs> i not right now not right now okay okay you just let me know i'll i'll, uh, I'll be here I'll yeah be here. later for sure later for sure and then if, I look if you back. want to if you want some if you want some tips on minesweeper uh 
I, I can help you out too. Franklin's starting to think the work seems pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> he looks forward. Okay. <laughs> so let's let's cut over to our resident uh, imposter. Uh, so, Raps, you want to remind me your character's name? Because I forgot to write it down. Absolutely. My character's name is Mads. M-A-D-S. Ah, just one, one D. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I was thinking two. Okay. So, Mads, you're... You're just here. No one's questioned you. Uh, I think one or two of the janitors kind of was like, oh, you're filling in for so-and-so. Uh, mm -hmm. Like it's normal, actually, to find a random replacement. Uh, and that's it. So you kind of have the run of the place. Uh, you, for the most part, your entire job is to uh, retrieve coffee cups and clean them. And also like papers, uh, styrofoam cups just get... They kind of get left behind, put on desks, and then just knocked over. And, mm -hmm. like, the big problem that you have to deal with, honestly, is coffee stains on the floor. Uh, yeah. Because, uh, you know, a, a spilt styrofoam cup, coffee sinks into the kind of already brownish rug, but it's, like, an extra stain. And uh, in uh, kind of an odd twist, it does seem like the uh, the corporation actually does deeply care about keeping things very tidy despite how little of the employees seem to care about it mm -hmm. and so it is your job to make up for that deficiency uh aggressively but otherwise nobody's really supervising you you're just supposed to uh clean up every mess that you see and otherwise uh just kind of walk around it you almost kind of feel like you're a, a security guard but for coffee stains instead really busting them um, I'm going to head to the janitorial closet. I'm already wearing the uh, uniform that was given to me by the person who I was giving counsel to over at the, the fortune teller stand. Uh, the name badge on my janitorial outfit says Johnny Mops. Um, <laughs> I head back to the uh, janitorial uh, closet so that I can pick up some bleach, some carpet cleaner, these kinds of things. And in general, I'm looking for some stains that happen to be nearer to people that seem a little bit more acute, people that seem like they might know a little bit more about the situation. If I could see anyone that looks like a manager with a stain near them, I want to just get down and scrub that stain while listening in. Okay. Uh, I, uh, actually, is that an investigative mystery? It seems like it's something. Yeah, that feels like an investigative mystery, maybe. I think so. I think so, too, yeah. I can see it. Oh, Absolutely. by the way, I should I should mention, seeing as we're here, since uh, we're rolling one-off rules, I'm going to go with the uh, the suggested thing that Rito had had, which is you guys gain double EXP during this session. Yeah. So, And you get experience whenever you fail a roll. So if you get a six or yes. less, you gain experience, which means in this we gain two experience. And in Monster of the Week, when you level up, you level up and pick your new stuff immediately and then reset your experience. Oh. So, like, leveling yep. up happens, and you do it on the spot. Cool, cool. It well, does mean you uh, might also get a disparity on what level people are, because yes. some people are a little bit luckier than others, which but is kind of cool in its own way. Yeah. It's like, it, the thing is, it's, you get either successful rolls, or you get stronger. So, like, it, it's just kind of, it works. So, no matter what, you're getting something, uh, which is mm -hmm. nice. Uh the other thing to uh, explain also before we go too far is that you have a resource called luck, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of sort of your, your I don't want to say your health, because you have health as a separate resource, but your luck is, uh, it gives you the ability to re-roll any roll at, at any point, and you can also, um, better it like, turns avoid it into damage. 12. Yeah, okay. Uh, so luck can be used to decrease a wound you just suffered to zero harm, or after you roll, retroactively change the result to 12. So it's not even a reroll. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't actually good. remember how much luck you guys get. We might want to just reduce it by like two or three for today. So uh, I believe you get those full seven points that are on the thing. But yes. as you spend them, the keeper gets the ability to deal harsher and harsher punishments to you. Yes. It's and true. then it, when you run out, you're doomed. Yeah. And you get an extra thing when you spend luck, depending on your class. Like some of them, some of them it's bad. Some of them it's good. For example, mine's probably not very relevant today, but the flake, when you spend a point of luck, you pick an aspect of the current situation. The keeper tells you what other conspiracies this connects to. So I can spend a luck oh. and make you tell me about a different one-off that's not happening. <laughs> I mean, 
so I, I will give that to you. Uh, I, I will give you random clues. Great. Probably afterwards uh, that you just pick up. Oh, great. Uh, specifically, I, I didn't finish it, uh, but Rhapsody, you have a Sasquatch card and you don't know where you got it. Ooh. Mm. Oh, that's neat. And uh, I think Jonas's luck point spend is that you just find something, something useful. Yeah. It says when you spend a point of luck, you'll find something weird, maybe even useful. Cool. Uh, mine uh, also says when I spend a point of luck, I run into someone I met at the show. Could be good, uh, could be good, could be bad. Who knows? Okay. Cool. Uh, so you're. Oh, right. You were rolling investigate a mystery. Now that yeah. we're yes. back on track. So uh, I've I've just tried to find one of the nearby coffee dispensers uh, that has a, a couple of stains on the ground near it. And assuming that people might come and get coffee and have a little bit of a chat around the cooler, well, cooler, the heater, I suppose, in a coffee's instance, uh, I get down and aggressively scrub one stain for a while, trying to listen in to the tune of an eight for problem solving, which I believe is hold one. Okay, so I was gonna go back to the moves. So you're doing investigate a mystery and that allows you to ask me a question, correct? Yes. 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 Hold one. So you can ask one of the following questions or maybe something kind of similar. So what happened here? What sort of creature is it? What can it do? A lot of these are a little bit more monster focused, but you're looking for a manager uh, to figure out what they're saying and doing? Uh, yeah. If I can spend the hold to locate someone that might be a little bit more uh, knowledgeable about the situation. Yeah. Where did they go, okay. basically? I think that's so, pretty much yeah. So I, I guess I'll kind of give you the information around that. As you kind of clean, you notice that there is almost kind of an even spread on how, or an even, it's like a, it's a bell curve for how the coffee is spilled. Uh, around the intern areas is pretty much clean. Uh, it does seem like maybe as you get a little bit more seniority, you start getting access to the coffee machines. And then once you become a full employee, then you get more. And that's when it starts getting messier and messier. So kind of your, your mid-range employees tend to be uh, quite messy and... Mm -hmm. Uh, as you go through, you do notice that they are a little bit more uh, overworked seeming. Uh, to compare these to the the living dead, these are the zombies, uh, whereas the the well, I mean these are the these are the zombie employees. What you do notice though is that uh, upper management's actually kind of tidy. Uh, so there's kind of these like weird hot spot hot spots. Uh, clean areas generally mm -hmm. around their their cubicle zones uh, that are generally devoid of coffee stains. Excellent, excellent. Um, I would like to, if possible, uh, start making my way towards the the cubicles I've identified as uh, preternaturally clean for this environment, the the far end of this bell curve, the more e executive suite area, uh, and okay. Uh, while trying to, uh, you know, scope out the area and see if there's anyone that I would be able to speak directly to, I'm just kind of walking around, kicking the ground, like, uh, oh okay. boy, this is real clean over here. Wow, what do you guys do keeping it clean? Uh, nobody really reacts to that. And in fact, you do notice it. it's actually kind of unusual. You're like the first person you've heard all day, oh. apart from the couple of janitors that you saw kind of on your way to the janitor closet. So it's it's kind of strange and off-putting how quiet it is where you are, apart from the endless tap-tap of uh, of people typing away on spreadsheets and, you know, click-click of their mouses. Uh, mm -hmm. So you notice a couple of things. Once again, you do notice that the, uh, the, the upper management do have the bigger coffee cups and tend to be a little bit nicer dressed. You do also notice, uh, as you're walking around, you're kind of surprised you didn't spot them earlier. But there are two of these things just kind of hanging out I do in the periphery. Wow. Uh, uh, so they're not they're not unknown to you. These are kind of a common security robot uh, mm -hmm. that is used largely in larger corporations. Uh, and there are, like I said, two of them uh, kind of on opposite ends of the uh, cubicle C. And they're just standing there. They're not doing anything. They're not interacting with people. Uh, but they are there. Interesting. Is there someone in cubicle C? Uh, no. When I say C, I mean S-E-A. Like it's an ocean right. of cubicles. Right, yes, sorry. Uh, but, I mean, 
eventually you do identify kind of the guy with the biggest coffee cup and the nicest suit. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you do want to try and talk to somebody, you can. Uh, um, if, like, if he seems like he's busy, I would actually prefer to kind of like lean against a mop in the, the inconspicuity of no one asking me a question why I'm here and just watch him for a while. Okay. Uh, if I'm allowed to watch him for a while. No one really bothers you. Uh, I like, I think if you take too long, somebody will stop you. So I'll tell you that mm -hmm. right now. Uh, but it doesn't take you long. Uh, what is your character's experience with, with computers? Uh, the world building thing I said from last time is still true. Uh, for people, I guess that haven't seen that yet. Cause that was, uh, that will be on YouTube later. Uh, at, at least as far as, uh, the world I'm lightly building with this, the internet is gone. People got rid of it because it sucked. Uh, computers still kind of exist, but it's more like local network things and like, no, none of your standard, uh, web browsing or any of that. It's just purely, uh, I guess YouTube somehow still exists. Don't question that. Uh, <laughs> we'll keep I was going to say, today. I was going to say that explains my 13 subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> you, it's so impressive. The it's, fact, a, it's like a you local know what? Actually, <laughs> why don't we go with that? You somehow have access to YouTube when nobody else does and that may come up later. That's um, yeah, yeah. So so Franklin Franklin extra yeah. thinks you're pulling his leg well, or that's something like, because I know that YouTube's only in old movies. I mean, <laughs> come on. Yeah, you've read about it in books. Uh, so I guess I might as well go back to uh, Mads for a second. What is your character's general experience with technology in general? Almost nothing. I've been a traveling carny my entire life. Okay, so. As somebody that is not generally terribly experienced with tech, it looks really boring. He is mostly just typing some stuff, and then he, like, selects one cell and then moves it around, and then some other stuff. And you don't really know what this accomplishes, uh, but he's just been doing that for, like, that 10 minutes. You've been tacitly watching him, mm -hmm. at which point somebody else probably turns around and says, like, hey, there's a stain over there. You should... Uh, Go deal with that. Or maybe uh, not even that. You you just hear somebody burn themselves in some coffee. It's kind of like a short I will yelp. Absolutely scurry over to clean that diligently. But before I do, uh, when I observe someone for a few minutes as a problem solver, I am capable of asking the keeper to tell me what their biggest problem is right now. And I would like to know what the biggest problem of the C-suite executive is. Uh so <laughs> uh you actually can hear his stomach was rumbling, like pretty audibly. Mm -hmm. uh, dude's hungry. All right, cool. I will scurry off to start cleaning the stain that my attention's been brought to. Okay. Uh, so you, you scurry off, and this is a little bit closer to kind of the, the intern section, the, the cleaner mm -hmm. area that, uh, I guess the other cleaner area that at first you thought is like, oh, maybe there's some, some higher ranking people over here, but no. Uh, you're, you've been kind of summoned over to just the edge of where the coffee spill zone is. And, uh, so you can, you can see people here a little bit less formally dressed. Uh, you do actually notice the interns are running around a little bit more. So let me switch to those. Uh, and not all of them are as cute as this one, but they're mostly just running around, uh, handing papers to other people or also mm -hmm. typing in things. Uh, it seems like seniority involves slightly more gopher quests whereas uh the most basic yep. people really are just doing the typey stuff cool cool is, am i is relatively mads, is mads near... close to new or new yeah. Yeah. yeah yes yeah so uh at, at any point in this you can just automatically say like yeah i approach them now uh yeah. because you can kind of also see uh some of these interns aren't even wearing like the dress code stuff uh mm -hmm. so uh I mean, straight up, Franklin. I'm assuming is wearing like a I, like a, a, a it's still Uber a dirty shirt. leather. Yeah. Oh like, right, Arnie's wearing a, a a Uber shirt, and yeah, Franklin's wearing a dirty leather jacket. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to continue my uh, cleaning and listening in act until I uh, see any direct sign of Arnie, the Uber driver. Oh, that's right. You so, know. Yeah. So. If, sorry, uh, can I can I do something? You may. Sure. Um, I would like to walk to Mads uh, because he is a 
janitorial artist, uh, and I oh have goodness. a wonderful hobby. Wonderful hobby. Uh, yes. And okay. I would like I would like to talk to him about speed running plumbing. Oh my! As an inch, as a way to break yeah. the ice. So, so Mads, you don't even see uh, Arnie first. Arnie spots you or hears you. Uh, mm -hmm. Here's the the mop bucket. Uh, I don't know. It's probably some kind of weird, uh, slightly sci-fi-ish like carpet cleaner thing. Yep. Uh, it like so lays you kind the of individual strands. Yep. Yeah. And so. Uh, so Arnie, you hear that coming, and you know what it is like down to the model, uh, and you just jump up because, uh, you know, as as riveting as the spreadsheets are, uh, plumbing is your passion, and mm -hmm. you cannot escape it. I cannot. <laughs> no, I I jump up and I go, wow, that is the Turbo Max ZX ninety two, this year's model. I can't believe it. I didn't Yo, if you've got the fire winged edition one. back at home, this thing is sweet. <laughs> Did I tell you about my YouTube channel? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'd say that Franklin looks over his shoulder as he hears the word YouTube channel again. <laughs> uh, what's a YouTube channel? First, let's take a step back here, Matt. Let me introduce myself. I am actually here for uh, other reasons but i'm finding to enjoy my time day my day job i'm an uber driver uh my name's arnie what's yours uh um uh your name's what and you're a what what <laughs> arnie the uber driver that's my day job but by oh, night geez. i i am a a plumber by hobby i i love to just book hotel rooms and fix people's <laughs> they, they leave the doors open i go in and I fix their toilets for them Wow. You're trying to book hotel rooms like me, <laughs> local conventions, like, uh, like you know, hot dog eating conventions, things like that, where there might be a real clog to deal with. I, you know what I actually go to is I go to, uh, you know what? No, I don't want to say that one. Um, yeah, let's just say we go to hot dog conventions. <laughs> Give, hook, put me in front of a porta potty, a toilet. I'm your guy. I, I love it. What does a janitor oh, damn, do in a porta potty? I gotta check out this YouTube channel. <laughs> How do you plunge up? You must be real good if you're <laughs> fixing a clog at a porta potty with like a plunger. How? <laughs> this, this much into it. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I think uh, you're just real good. Well, it's it's lovely to meet you, honey. My name's Johnny Mops. I'm an intern here in the uh, junior janitorial staff. It's a pleasure to meet you, Johnny Mops. Uh, is that a family name? Like, are you, uh, I gotta say, I love it. And thanks, you... thanks. It, yeah, it's a family name. It's a kind of nominative determinism. Like, you know, I was born, I was named Johnny, my last name's Mops. I figured I should probably go into the family names. Oh, uh, I love a name well... that's a sentence, you know, Johnny Mops, you know, exclamation point at the end, that's a sentence. Oh, you actually have an exclamation point in your name. I didn't know they did that. That's cool. Yep, Johnny Mops. Um, Wander, can I ask a logistical question? Um, sure. Is is Johnny Mops's accent out of like severely out of place, or is it the normal? <laughs> uh, uh, if if you don't know Wanda, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's probably uncharacteristic uh, for the area. Most, I mean, especially this building. Like, this building, everybody's just kind of like, yeah, okay, sure, why not? Johnny Mops is the first person with inflection you have heard. Uh, and that includes Franklin. Like, Fra mm -hmm. Franklin is pretty deadpan with you. Yes. Whereas uh, Johnny Mops is, uh, well, not a, a figurative ray of sunshine in uh, corporate hell. I love it. Cool, thank so, you. So, what? Uh Arnie, can you tell me how you got uh, messed up, uh, mixed up in all this, uh, you know, the corporate world? You know, if you're a hotshot speedrunner of plumbing toilets, I, I just think there'd be better things for you to do. Well, you know, Johnny, uh, to be honest here, uh, it's not, I wasn't expecting it today. Uh, I came in, I was helping out uh, my soon-to-be uh, BFF, Franklin, who's right over there. I point to the cubicle. Uh, Franklin right. turns back. He was looking, but he turns back in front to the computer. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, so tough I, crowd. I, I, there's I'm going to just shift focus while you two gossip, uh, if that's okay. Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Franklin, 
Yeah. You are so immediately focused on escaping this. Yeah. Because it's just harshing your vibe. Yeah. You start like flipping at the computer and you yeah. kind of realize you can't. Interesting. Like I try you and press buttons to the spreadsheet. And it's not even there, I can't minimize. You I can't, can't turn it off. You can't pull up like any kind of extra thing, reading material, uh super minesweeper, none of that. It's just spreadsheets. Okay. Uh alt tab doesn't even work. I would say I like I start exploring at that point I start like looking under the desk. I start exploring around the cubicle just like making sure like making sure it's even like plugged into anything, seeing like if there's the cables where like where the cables are running just trying to figure out something cuz this is so strange. So it is plugged in. Good. It's a good step. So it, like it is as far as you can tell a fully functional computer. Mm -hmm. But it only has one function. Yeah. And like just trying literally everything. Closing out Alt F4, every single thing. Nothing yeah. does anything. Okay. Can I turn uh, off I, the unless computer? Unless you're trying some. Uh, so you're just going to unplug it? Can I, I. I look around and then I. To see if any. If Man with Big Cup is watching. <laughs> no. So nobody is really overseeing you. Then I. Yeah. I. Say. I get down on the ground and I, I unplug the computer and I see if I can. Okay. So you, uh, yeah, you can unplug it. Does it turn off? Yes. Okay. I figured it's okay. <laughs> That's it. All right. I get, I get You down. do kind of notice there's a silence, like an unusual one, as mm -hmm. you do. Interesting. Like, uh, like some of the din is reduced. All right. Interesting. Um, I say I, I I plug it back in, and then I I think I I get up and I I think I start to look around at like the coffee machines, if I can. Okay. Would that so be so? As you're looking around, you do notice that one of the drones, uh, one of the one of the like fancier dressed ones, is actually moving your direction. Uh, mm -hmm. like you unplugged the computer and he noticed. Okay. He uh... is looking in your direction. Okay, but I, 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 before I get up and leave, I did plug it back in. I'm making that note just yeah, in case. Yeah, so it, it's booting back up. Yes. And it, and it boots through Windows 36 and then <laughs> uh, just pops right back to the spreadsheet. <laughs> okay. I say Franklin's kind of like down, down this kind of like aisle of cubicles. He's kind of like power walking with like lots of arm motions while looking back over his shoulder as he moves towards like the closest of many coffee machines. Okay. So, uh, so you're looking for the coffee machines. You're just yes. power walking away from this, this guy. Uh, yes. Uh, very, but like trying to move fast without making it look like I'm trying to run away from him. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, it doesn't take long. There are coffee machines almost every 10, 20 feet. Like they're everywhere. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you reach one. What do you do with it? I, hmm. Is this something, could I investigate a mystery upon it, or is that sure. too far? Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to abuse the XP farm. You can investigate a mystery, but you might have to do some things with investigating yeah. it. Yeah, I would say, like, first of all, okay, step one, I rolled a, let's see, six plus two, I rolled an eight. Okay. Which is a, which is a hold one. Okay, so let's. Okay. Now that I know that, let me think about how I would go about it. Let's see. What's it? There's what? What, what can hurt it? <laughs> what can hurt this coffee machine? <laughs> no, um, not yet. I would say I grab. I try and grab a cup and fill it up. Okay. And examine the coffee, and I ask the investigative mystery question: What is being concealed here, if anything? Uh. Okay, so you roll, rolled well enough that uh, the coffee smells different. I don't know how much of your character, uh, your character actually like drinks coffee. I would imagine regular. he drinks too much coffee. Like okay, he, so, he's like stereotype uh, boring protagonist, taken a bit too far. Perfect. Okay, so y your character has an extensive knowledge of coffee. This coffee actually smells very wrong to you. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's too sweet, it's like kind of this like weird, sickly Swedishness. Like it definitely smells like coffee. They got that right, but mm -hmm. 
to you, an experienced coffee expert or aficionado or just constant consumer, uh, this is wrong coffee. I knew it, Franklin says quietly to himself. And then he <laughs> looks around for where to set down the cup of coffee kind of awkwardly. I don't, I don't know what to okay, do now. So as you're looking around, you notice that... Uh, oh, no, that's the background. You notice that the drone is, like, getting closer to you. Uh, I... And he's not alone. There's, like, two more. Okay. Um, hmm. I would say, is there is there a trash can nearby? <laughs> yeah. I would say he, uh, Franklin, would drop off the coffee and the mug, just straight up, mug or cup or whatever. Okay. Straight in the trash can and begins to try and, like, briskly fast walk back to his cubicle in a roundabout way. Like, taking a long <laughs> way. Like, I'm playing Pac-Man. And I'm trying to get back okay. to the other side. That's what that's what okay. Franklin attempts to do. Sure. I they're kind of slow. They're mm. there's kind of a weird inevitability of these guys. Yeah. Uh, they're following you. They're not following you that fast. Uh, and they just kind of they just I, I don't want to say retrace your steps, but they follow your path. Uh and it it does seem like even though you have reached your cubicle, mm -hmm. they are still heading your direction anyway. Okay. Uh, uh, so we're going to cut over to the other two. So you you two saw Franklin more or less just like speed walk out of there really quickly for some reason. And then uh, one of the drones just kind of moseyed by. Uh, and I, I'm going to assume that didn't register quite yet. But Franklin speed walking back and then seeing two more coming your direction uh, has kind of registered in. Oh, this is slightly important. Mm -hmm. Uh but also, if you said anything else of import that you wanted to get done with, that is also admissible. Because, I mean, this still took a couple minutes. All right, all right. As soon as I figure out how, I'll subscribe. Wait, what's up in there? Uh, looking in the distance and seeing Franklin approaching and the uh, drones approaching uh, behind Franklin with a little bit uh, more of a pace and a little bit of a worry on his face, um, Mads is going to move to intercept the drones. I don't know how wide these spaces between the two cubicles are, but if possible, two people, I would. Two sorry? people can walk like side by side. That that's Excellent. about it. If possible, I would like to set up my janitorial cart, my my uh, mop bucket, or also off to one side and crouch down to start cleaning the ground, effectively creating a small human barricade. Okay, so you're just going to block the way. Yep. <laughs> Oh man, there's a life. spot here that only I can see. Oh, someone's gotta get I, this. It's gonna take me a while. I mean, it doesn't even take that much. You like you just find a coffee machine or a big spill and you just start cleaning it. Hmm. Um I, I would like to say God, that I I would like to go check on Franklin. That, that would be my Okay. Story. Yeah. Okay. Dude, so Hey, I noticed uh, he was walking pretty quick there. He didn't do let's that. Let's finish with Mads real quick. Okay, okay. Uh and then we'll cut over to you. Yeah. Uh, so Mads, you succeed. Uh, here, give me a second. Can you give me a manipulate people roll? So just because. Manipulate someone, and that is rolling with plus charm. I have great news. Mads is incredibly charming. <laughs> oh, I fail uh, with a five. <laughs> oh, wait. wait how, okay. You have a five That's with, with a plus. plus two. Oh no. <laughs> oh my. Hey, gra uh, great okay. news, raps. Mark two experience. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> okay. So you, you try and set up a barricade and like really take up the space. Uh, and they're, they're actually not having it. I'm trying to decide, I guess, what are the consequences? Are there? Or it doesn't say. Do they just Unimus, keep walking forward like an uh, unstoppable object pushing the cart? <laughs> just right yeah, over just top like, of them. Yeah. I, I think... I think that's exactly what happens. They just kind of walk through you and your cart, uh, maybe Ooh. pushing you to the side, knocking your your cart over, uh, mm -hmm. which makes an even bigger mess. Uh, it's also really weird. Do do I take a, a harm as they as they no. trudge through me? Uh, you take a zero harm hit to your ego, but that's <laughs> about it. <laughs> cool. Uh, as as they trundle past, uh, and you know my voice is fading into the distance behind them, I'm going. Hey, what you not allowed to do that in the company? What, where's the HR policy of this thing? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I love it. Okay, uh, 
So Rhapsody, you notice that another drone from elsewhere is starting to head your direction. Oh boy, that's my time to go. I'm gonna try and uh, okay. get up and make my way towards the janitorial closet. Okay, so you, you escape into one of the few back halls that you know about. Uh, so back to Arnie and Franklin. Yeah. Uh, so I guess, Arnie, you've come to check on Franklin. So we'll start that's with correct. that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I came to check on Franklin as I noticed that he was walking very quickly through a cup of coffee in the garbage. Yeah. Uh, cup, in, cup included. And I just go, oh, hey, buddy, uh, everything, everything all right there. I, was, I, I, care, I care about you, and I want to check on you. I, I would say Franklin doesn't even parse this. Just don't, don't drink the coffee. Don't drink the coffee. Did you drink oh, the coffee? Okay. No, I haven't. Yet. I was coffee. gonna get a, I was gonna get a cup. <laughs> well, don't. What's wrong? What's I, wrong, what's wrong with the coffee? I like I, coffee. It smells wrong. I don't know what. I just, I've had enough of it in my life. I know it's wrong. There's something wrong. There's something wrong with all these people. I'd say he's started like he's starting to just. I I would say, would it be clear to Franklin at this point, as someone who's came in here skeptical, that this there's something off? Oh yeah, already. I mean this is confirmed. Like, it's every been, assumption you have. Yeah, I said, I knew it. I knew this place was up to no good. I saw him on the TV. I said, I don't like that place. I don't like that place. I don't like what they're doing. I don't understand it. I'm gonna understand it so I can not like it for a good reason. And I understood it. I get it. I'm here. There's something wrong with the coffee. They're putting something in the coffee. Don't drink the coffee. You know what? You know what? As a hobbyist plumber, uh, yes. I'm a big fan of, of coffee and the and the benefits that it, it <laughs> yes. brings to my hobby. Yeah, it's done wonders I, for the speed running it's community. Done one. <laughs> <laughs> I I am now upset that they are giving people not coffee. What do you think they're giving people? I I, I don't know. I don't know. All right, I, mean, all right. probably, I I can tell it's not coffee. Probably brainwash him. Probably, I don't know. It ain't good. It ain't good. It smells bad. It smells sweet. I don't take my coffee with anything sweet, anyways. I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't have liked it, anyways. Uh, did we? Did we notice that uh, Johnny Mops got pushed over? So yeah, probably not because he was yeah. like kneeling. Uh, I guess as you say that, you probably do. Like if if you if you say that, you look around. You do see Johnny Mops beating a retreat for like one of the only doors you can see, and there is a drone following him. Mm-hmm. Are the people still coming after me at all, or were they? Oh yeah, diverted? they're getting real yeah, close. Yeah, that's what I thought. Like they are. I'd say like I have both my hands on uh, Arnie's shoulder and say, "We got to get out of here. We got we got to figure out what's going on." I and then I I look around and I you say there's only one exit. Right, that that we could see. No, there's only one door. Well, only that one you can door see. that we can see. I would say that even Franklin, not even knowing anything about Mads or anything at this point, saying like, "That's the door. That's a good call." And I, I'd say like, "Come with me, run." And then I say, <laughs> and then I, <laughs> I give him some of my stuff from my cubicle to carry. I say, "Come on, you said you were going to help me out with carrying stuff. Let's go. Let's get out." And then okay, I, so, so you can I can I use much? What do you oh, got? Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, you don't have much in your cubicle. You have uh, the the ergonomic sitting ball, uh, keyboard, monitor, and probably like a complimentary water bottle. I, get, I, I do take anything that is like handheld that's like not attached to the computer and I can get, grab easily. I make, I try and make Arnie carry it. <laughs> Just, okay. So even if just... it wasn't mine to begin with, I was like, you take my stuff. <laughs> I call it my stuff okay. and I give it to you. <laughs> so, Arnie, you now have an ergonomic ball and I forget the other thing. The water bottle? Yeah, I definitely want the wa- I definitely I want the water bottle. Uh, okay. I, I do try, I bit before this, I do try and yank on the mouse a little bit to see if I could get it out of the key computer. Oh, yeah. In one quick motion. Yeah, you absolutely... You you can disconnect the the mouse. Easy. Okay, I I pull it out and I like I look down at my hands like I I I and then I just throw it at Arnie. So that too. <laughs> okay. Who so knows? Ar- Ar- Arnie, you are now armed with office stuff. I mean, uh, oh, and it's a it's a rollerball mouse from uh, yeah thirty fifty yep. years ago. Yeah, Franklin's full skeptical. He's like, you know, this all has to be useful. Like this is going to all connect somehow. This mouse is part of it. Is probably getting into their veins. The, the coffee 
doing and he's like he's just making up all kinds of like take it <laughs> and then all right okay. beelines lines it for the door so, or tries to so the problem the problem is the drones are between you and the door yeah so we can't, can pack, I, we can't pack man around <laughs> you can pack man around but uh you don't see a clear as clear of a path sure hmm. so can i do this is a logistic question um hmm. i can do a move right which move? Yes. I, and I can use like my let's get out of here, like a special move Ooh. for you, for your mundane move. Ooh, Ooh which that's is, you so can good. Pr- you can protect someone by telling them what to do or by leading them out. Roll plus charm instead of tough. So I okay. would like I would like to let's get out of here and lead Franklin to that door. And okay. doing Give doing doing the pack bin. Doing the pack <laughs> Uh it is a eleven. Oh my lord. Okay. <laughs> You find all the all the uh, so, ways out. So somehow, despite the fact that uh, Arnie has all of this stuff, Arnie still manages to grab you <laughs> by the hand and just like beeline a very efficient kind of loop to loop around the drones and then out through that door. Uh, <laughs> just the visual, the visual of Franklin forcing Arnie to carry all this stuff, including a full on exercise ball <laughs> and then having you lead him out <laughs> and see just i'm visualizing you running like with the ball in front of you swaying back and forth left and right while you're kind of like fast jogging I, yeah I, it's but so good uh franklin put his hands on my shoulders and that was enough that was the, mo- that was the motivation <laughs> franklin thought it might be it might be helpful <laughs> for getting can, what he can needed I... Can I pitch here that protect someone on a 10 plus, you get the ability to also choose an extra. You could choose to bowl the ergonomic ball down the hallway in order to hold the enemies back. Is that? Oh, oh yeah, you're right. Wait, is your, uh, is your let's get out of here a protect someone rule? Yes, yes. it is yes. a protect oh, someone. Okay. I should probably look at what that does. So oh, it, it basically, the, oh, yeah. what it is, I roll plus charm instead of tough. So on plus gotcha. 10, 10 plus, so you suffer little harm. Okay, I got to put. You could also, yeah, you could do you hold the enemy back, which makes sense. Okay. Or I I gotta be honest, I like the idea uh, of rolling the agronomic ball. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that, uh, sure, why not? So you just, uh, I I guess this is a bonus. Uh, Give me a kick uh, kick some ball roll, (laughs) just for the hell of it. All right. I'll kick some ball. (laughs) I, I'll say as you do this, Franklin. We needed that. We Wait, needed actually, that. no. You don't have to. No, you just hold the enemy back. Yeah, yeah. you don't need to roll any of that. Yeah, like you, if you, ah. you pick hold the enemy back, it's kind no. of like a perfect okay. thing for so, this specific and, situation. And, and it, they are they are now focused on me. No, no longer okay. Franklin. Yeah. That, well, that's I, the other thing I'm just going to assume what you do is you just wind back and just huck the thing, uh, in like a perfect arc and just bop one or both of them because i mean they're pretty close and these balls aren't that small i you probably just like catch them both on the shoulder and just yeah probably either knocks them over or they kind of like spin into each other really awkwardly uh which yeah works they are they are down for the count and you guys just beat a retreat uh around them and on your way out i'll say as you Uh, one thing i will say is Oh yeah. No, as you throw it, Franklin's just like he, he kind of puts his arms out to like try and catch it. Like, no, we we need that. That's probably evidence. But then as it rolls into them, he's like, Okay. All right. I like that. And then, like this is the first thing that Arnie's done that Franklin's kind of like, okay. I mean, maybe I can give him <laughs> my number later. <laughs> the WhatsApp. <laughs> no, I'll give him the WhatsApp later. Or whatever equivalent still exists. Equivalent. Equivalent. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. All right, is it? Okay. And then you guys power walk your way out safely and into the janitorial hallway. Am I still in this hallway by the time they've arrived? Yeah, so you've probably reached the the kind of janitor's area. Because it's like, it's a little bit more than just a closet. It's like a small room with refills and supplies and some other things. Mm-hmm. Is there anything, uh, is there anything like a locker here? Like, like something that someone might keep their day clothes in? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, cool. you have the locker. Oh, yeah. I guess you have. The, did you get the key from the uh, the janitor? Yes. That you're replacing or no? Okay. Uh, My, so you're just as far as that janitor is locker? concerned, I'm just doing his job today. Fair enough. Okay. So you're popping his locker open. 
Yeah, if possible. I'd like to search for something that I can change clothes into to try and okay. lose the trial. Yeah, so you uh, you do find the guy's just kind of spare set of clothing uh, that he keeps around. It's just a set of overalls and, like, a white shirt, mm -hmm. uh, kind of stained. Very conspicuous, but not in the same way that your janitor outfit might be. Excellent. Uh, I'm going to quickly change into that and then take uh, one of the bottles of cleaning fluid that I know to be uh, least toxic to the skin and uh, just slick my hair back, trying to complete the disguise of a different person. Okay. I, I feel like that's got to be a role. Is there a move <laughs> oh, yeah. for that? If anything, I would say, oh, God. Act under pressure. It could be maybe? act, under, act pressure under pressure or arguably yeah, doing yeah. manipulate, but probably yeah. Act well, pressure. act under pressure is also roll plus cool. This feels like that a roll feels plus like cool. A, yeah, that's plus cool. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, with my plus, I managed to get a seven, uh, so I can okay. get a worse outcome, hard choice, or price to pay. Okay. Uh, it doesn't say I have to give you a choice on those. Uh, what's the worst outcome? Okay. So you make it as far as put, putting the cleaning stuff in your hair, and it's not what you think it is. I'm trying to think. Uh, so almost as soon as, like, you just kind of are in a hurry. So you put it on your hands, and you start slicking your hair back, and you realize that this just feels, like, really wrong, and you're mm -hmm. not sure why. Uh, and it's in your hair now, and it feels, like, kind of gross and almost a little bit more kind of like a gel that you've just put in there by accident and it feels bad. Mm -hmm. It's just hand soap. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Purell. we're going to cut back over to Arnie and Franklin. You guys enter a very long hallway and kind of partway down is a singular door that is partly ajar. Okay. Uh, oh. I would imagine. Is, it, is, we, it, is, it, is there like light through the door? Or no. Is it? Just yeah. Dark? Yeah. There's a light on. Yeah. I think we. I think we're probably beelining it there. I. I think we're still brisk walking. Like a. I think. <laughs> I think Franklin is now pushing me from behind. Yeah. As a human shield towards. Yeah. The yeah. Tour. Yeah. I. I. I'm like a few <laughs> steps away from using you as a battering ram. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say yeah. I'm. I'm pushing you from behind, like trying to stay pretty yeah. close, just in case. But I'd say that. We're probably just running forward as you know as much as we can to the door. Okay. So you uh you get through the door and inside is uh a new guy uh with kind of weird goopy purple hair. Mm. He's uh, wearing overalls and a white shirt, and he looks <laughs> kind of freaked out. Is oh, hey, yeah, we, we uh, uh, straight up <clears throat> check up on him. <clears throat> hey, hey buddy, you okay? Sorry, uh hey you guys, what's up? Uh, you know this guy? I, I, I look to... I'm sorry. I just can't. Neither of you recognize him. Okay. Oh, of course. I just can't with the voice acting. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Arnie, me up. we met outside, babe. Come on. We shared a love of cleaning things quite quickly, you know. Oh, let's get... Arnie, baby. I... Oh, um... You're killing me, dude. I can't. <laughs> oh. uh, you you seem familiar, but I, I don't know who you are. If you, I've never seen you before in my life. <laughs> oh, yep. Good point. Well, mate, I had to wear a disguise outside. This is me on natural. Mad the spectacular. Happy to meet you. Uh, frankly, that doesn't help squints. explain who you are. <laughs> it's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I I am I am very very cautious of Mads uh, at this point. You're just only it's aware pleasure. of Johnny Sweeps, was it? Johnny Mops. Johnny Mops. Johnny Mops. Yes. You didn't you didn't I mean, say you were Johnny Mops, so yeah. That's true. I was previously Johnny Mops. That was the role I played just a couple moments ago. Well lauded. I feel like it done it. Look, I don't know how the award season's gonna shake out, but I'm hoping to get nominated at least. You know, but um, it is an honor. In the meantime. <laughs> I'm just looking for, you know, something sturdy and uh, stiff that I could use to bat someone that might come into this room fast. Okay. 
so within that, there are mops. There are kind of the brush bristly brooms. There mm -hmm. are, uh, oh, uh, like kind of the monkey wrench, the the big plumber's wrench things. Oh, yes. Uh, so you have you have some options in here if you're looking for blunt instruments with which to kill office workers with. Do we still I have our equipment? Love to by pick the up way, a monkey wrench that we have on, like, that we pick on our character sheet, or do we retcon that? Depends don't. on the size. If you got a golf club, the answer is no. If it's a knife I, or brass knuckles, I, I think you're good. I have a gun, so. Uh, are we talking shotgun or handgun? A, a revolver. Oh yeah, you got. I have that. a revolver Didn't and a check. pistol and a flashlight. Great. I yeah, have two, two you guns. are. You are fully armed. I I I I grab one of my my pistol. And I look, and I know Arnie more, and I'm still looking between the two, like, oh god, which, which one do I give this to? <laughs> the first I literally don't even know are Arnie, and then, <laughs> and then I just I grab the gun and I like I put it up to Arnie's chest, I like you know not pointed at him. I was like, here you go, here you go. This is important hand, right now. Hand the butt of the knife. Hand yes. The butt of the gun. Uh, yes. Pointed sideways, like they do in the movies. Like here you go. I... This will thank you. This will you can keep my crickets in line. Have you used one of these before? I, 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 I have not. And frankly, Franklin. Yeah. Uh, All right. You like that? No. Um, <laughs> what? Are, like, what are we? What are we talking about? Here? Just some people were walking. I just get just as, get ready. Just drones. get ready. It, this. I'm telling you, it's about to hit the fan. I'm telling you, it's all converging on this. It has to do with the probably the mouse and I. <laughs> Point at the mouse you have in your pocket. It has something to do with that. <laughs> it's all converging. They're coming to get it. They know I took it. They're coming to get the mouse. You know, just... I usually wouldn't really buy in for all this conspiratorial <laughs> nonsense, but um, the fact that you're here, and I point directly at Arnie, tells me something's going on. I think we should look a little deeper. And those guys with the glazed expression that were running in our direction, oh boy. Okay, That's so as friendly. you say that, one of them appears in the door and says, uh, Janitor Johnny Mops, you have been noticed for disruption. You will come with me. <laughs> oh. Um, I, well, it's a shame there's no one in the room named that. Uh... They're looking at both of you, or they're looking at everybody, and yeah, mm -hmm. there is no Johnny Mops. That's true. Um, I'm holding... <laughs> I, I I tell like I whisper <laughs> for Arnie to put the gun away that I just gave him. <laughs> uh, I okay, <laughs> I'm gonna need an I act was, under gonna... pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I didn't want to not have the possibility of being punished for the fact that we I was just holding two guns as they marched in. <laughs> like a okay. cowboy. Okay. Okay. Who do you, who do you want pressure. to roll? Sorry. Yeah. You want me to roll? Both of us are just. Yep. Both of you. Both of you okay. have guns out. Yeah, that right. is true. Or you can keep them out, but he's going to see them very shortly as he is now looking, oh. starting to look in your direction. I got a 10, but I have minus one cool, so I get a 9. <laughs> I, f okay. I, got a, I got a 5. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got two experience anyway. Yeah. You okay. Put, so mark two experience, Jonas. Yeah. So, uh, I'm gonna give you an option. Yeah. Uh, you can drop the gun no. entirely, uh, in plain sight, or you can shoot the guy, oh, or God. just shoot in general. And only those two choices. Uh, I, on a miss, things go to hell. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying to think. I'm reading the rules. Can I, by drop, can I just, like throw the try to throw the gun like backwards on the ground like it was me yeah. trying to hide it like oh yeah it, you know like yeah mom caught Jonas's you with your hand in the cookie is jar a and little like, bit Boop. worse yeah my i so i drop it behind me on the ground a little bit well no 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 you didn't roll the five so you yeah. you just put it away but he sees you putting it away okay okay yeah jo yeah jonah's got a five or yeah my, he sees you hard. putting something away jonas on the other hand rolls bad so he's either dropping the gun in a very big way or he's shooting something <laughs> i'm oh, i'm gonna no. shoot you're gonna fire on okay. I'm, I'm, Jonas, no no 
How here, do you try and put here, it away and you fire it? <laughs> that that's what I was gonna say is yeah. like I don't I don't mean to fire it, but it does get okay. fired. Okay. Because I, I I've never handled a gun before, right? So I, I knew I should have you turned to, to look the, at this guy. Just man with the purple hair. <laughs> just give give me a how are you putting this away? Because I want to see because you're butterfingering the gun and shooting something. Yeah. I. I just want to hear the basic description of like how you're putting it away, where you're putting it away, and whatnot. Um, I'm putting it in the old uh, plumber's crack. Uh, oh, no. Try and no! <laughs> we, we look, in in the industry we call it the plumber's pocket. Oh, oh no! Oh no! And, uh, in a, in a, I try to put it in the back of my pants. L let's say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now that I know you're doing that, yeah. I'm going to say That's you luck great. out. <laughs> your pants don't. And I, I don't know. Would you belt. take damage for he this? Maybe he shoots his belt off. And his yeah. I think you shoot your belt off. <laughs> I think I absolutely take damage from that. <laughs> No, no, I th I think you shoot your belt off, so you're actually going to have some trouble moving until you fix your pants somehow. Yeah, the pants just All keep right. coming down. <laughs> yeah, the pants are now coming down. They're, they weren't the most uh, well-fit of pants to begin with. Uh, and so you now have a sizable hole in your waistline, and you've just shot your pants off <laughs> in front of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> now, and, importantly... And Franklin. Do, yeah, yeah. Importantly, does and the Franklin, guy react? Yes. Like, is this embarrassing um, to him? Even. Yeah. So, yeah. he doesn't react right. Yeah. Okay. What would he do? I think he starts hissing. Actually. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. So, okay. uh, alas for me, I haven't drawn this. Uh, so I'll, I'll just pull something else. So he starts hissing, and I, I'm going to say within like a moment. Uh, let's see if I can find another one. There we are. So, like, one more, one more of these guys shows up. Uh, let me oh, move no. in there, and then one of these guys also shows up. And at first, he's got oh, just a regular cool. briefcase, and then it opens up. Oh no! Uh, so you you are more or less cornered, and uh, so I haven't drawn it for the office drones. Uh, but their, their mouths are real toothy and their tongues are, they have eyes on them. Uh, and they have cornered you in this room. Okay. And, uh, Arnie just shot his pants off. <laughs> what do you guys do? So how many of them have already entered the room? Uh, so only the first guy, the rest are starting to crowd. Like they're starting to move in, uh, mostly because many of them were already on their way. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for the most part, this is still like seconds, uh, in. Cool, cool. Um, am I aware that more of them are coming or is this like you can hear them. I'd have from like, outside? Cool. It's kind of like a chorus of hissing. So you're not sure how many there are, but you can at least see these and, uh, there might be more. While the uh, while the 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 man in gray that is currently in this room is observing the descended trousers of Arnie, uh, I'd like to uh, quickly grab a mop and try and bar the door. Okay, uh, so the door is currently open. So how are you barring it? Are you like going to try and shove the guy through the door and then then? Bar I'm happy it, keeping or... him inside. I want to close the door behind him and just like okay. if there's like a push mechanism i want to try and jam the mop under that if there's uh i guess if there's just like a standard uh, you know keyhole and door then i'm going to have to figure out a different solution well uh, it's time for you to roll act under pressure let's go baby i mean that is an eight okay so that is seven to nine give you a worse outcome hard choice or price to pay okay so uh as you're like getting in there, you're shutting the door, and the uh, the the intern with the briefcase is mm -hmm. actually gonna chuck the briefcase at you. Ooh. So your hard hard choice here is 
do you duck out of the way and leave the door open or do you manage to get the door closed and barricaded but get a brief briefcase to the face Ooh. can i see the teeth of this briefcase yes oh yeah it is it is open and slightly flappy mm-hmm mm-hmm i i'm going to take it okay and bar the door so i'm gonna say this one's kind of impromptu but it'll get worse you only take one harm uh because the briefcase isn't really meant to be a projectile yet uh but you do manage to bar the door and and close it off hmm. uh let's see i guess franklin it's your turn next what okay. do you do uh may i what would you classify this situation as a bad one yes <laughs> could i, I read it could i read oh, a bad sure. situation okay that's so okay good. all right that is an eight plus two that's ten so okay. that's a whole three i get to ask three questions i don't know if there's three that are gonna sure. be relevant so i'll i'll just ask uh i guess i'll ask what's the biggest threat right now i guess that would be like which individual entity is the scariest like okay. most so the threatening answer is to us? Uh, you hear something much louder than the hissing people outside, uh, and it kind of sounds like clunk, clunk, clunk. Okay. Uh, oh boy. And it gives you the heebies. Um, here's a hail mary. What is my best way out? Is there like a vent, air vent, so or something we could try and escape you, out of? You do actually notice a vent. There okay. is a, uh, a kind of a service hatch duct looking thing. Uh, it's a bit small and kind of rusted over, and there is a cleaning cart on top of it. But it looks like uh, it it might actually have some depth to it, and it's just big enough that you could probably squeeze through, as okay. could anybody and everybody else in the room. Um, hmm. I guess, you know, I'll make it a two-prong, is, as far as what is my best way into the vent? What is our best way into the vent? Is there, like, is the... Is that the cleanest path that we have to get up there safely? Like, what is uh, it? Yeah, probably. Okay. Uh, right. So going out through the door means you'd have to go through some amount of whatever the things are. Uh, I'm assuming your character has no idea what these monsters are baseline just because I, yeah. you're a conspiracy theorist, not a monster expert. Yeah, I think he uh, hears the noise and he doesn't like it, so he wants to go yeah. away, and that's about the extent so, of it. Yeah, so your best way in, uh, well, I guess I'll give you that. You do spot a crowbar. Ooh, all right. Nice. Uh, I I yoink the crowbar and I mm. intend to like I point out the vent and I intend to try and usher everybody up there. But I do say I do say Arnie boost me before anything else. Like I don't. Uh, well, and then I the vent is the on the ground. Oh, it's on the like, ground. It's on the ground. I say Arnie it's boost a me down. Thing. <laughs> Boost me down. <laughs> <laughs> I say, Ar Arnie, Arnie, give me a leg me. down. Arnie, Arnie, hold me. <laughs> okay. So, and I, I attempt to do that. Uh, it's, sure. Uh, Arnie, what are you doing? Are you helping him? I no. Because there's also a man <gasps> that is uh, like a creature yeah. that is going to advance on you if you don't do anything. Yeah. Uh, I look at it and I go like Franklin. Look, we don't know where that vent leads. We we have to to figure something out. I'll say we I, know where the door leads. I, I, I try to pick up my pants, and I guess I only have one hand for, <laughs> not, to hold them. Yeah, so you I'm have not one taking hand advice pants from a man with hand, hands on the ground. <laughs> you have one hand for pants and one hand for gun, unless you <laughs> put the gun somewhere. <laughs> That's so I, good. Yeah, I'm going to... A gun is I, a gun feels out of character. Like, yeah. But, I don't know. But what I want to do is I really want to try weird science. Um, okay. Try, when you create or adapt a device to analyze or deal with strangers, I want to analyze the strangeness. Uh, uh, here, where is weird science? Uh, do you know what page that is? Uh, if you go oh, to the alternate weird basic moves. Yeah. Yeah, all, yeah, 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 yeah. So I roll a weird, which I have a zero in. Um, ten or more two requirements. Blah blah blah. So I know it, the reason I bring this up is that we're in like this custodial closet. There's tools and such around. I'm thinking like between the the suitcase itself and the tools that are available, I can figure something out to analyze what strangeness. Yeah. Is coming. So I I will say weird science is not something you can do quickly. It takes a little bit of time to get going. Uh 
I think. Okay. Oh no, you roll first, and then we pick some requirements. Yeah. It okay. So like. I'll I'll roll. I'll roll. I got a five. Cool. Okay. Well, on a miss, something goes horribly wrong. Yeah, so but you are still XP. able to create it with three requirements. So okay, but those requirements could so be I, it takes too long. <laughs> but I yeah. don't pick the requirements. Yeah, wander you correct? Pick. Yeah, I do. On a miss, wander picks. On a ten, you pick okay. two. Okay, so you have a device in mind, but you're going to need uh, you are going to need uh, one of the computer monitors from outside. You Demon are going house. to need uh, some time to actually build it, and uh, you will definitely need help finishing it. Hmm. Thank God it's not the mouse. <laughs> that's the the crux to the yeah. whole thing. All right, I like the monitors. That's a that's a good one. Um, so I turn I turn to to Mads and Franklin. And I say, guys, like we we got to figure out what's going on. We can't just run aimlessly around this building and hope for the best we we gotta we gotta do some analysis in my time as an intern doing data analysis on the spreadsheets i learned a few things franklin's been over we need to vent we need to find out what's going on yeah so does somebody franklin, does somebody want me to does somebody want to join me trying to get a monitor right so That's as fair. you're saying this franklin pops uh shoves the cart off and pops the vent mm-hmm I I'm uh, I am li- I'm like look like I'm listening like I am looking you in the eyes while I am <laughs> like opening up the vent and all that like I I'm but I, and I'm nodding like yeah yeah right. <laughs> and Matt's on the other hand you've got a briefcase that is chewing on your face yeah. what do you do uh, I'm going to uh, quickly uh, swing my arms around and try and grab the bottle of cleaning fluid that looks like it has the most warnings on it uncap okay. it which i imagine is going to take a little bit of effort because it's child safe and all that kind of stuff uh and jam it into the briefcase and just squeeze the bottle okay uh what would that be give me kick a some, uh, kick some case, kick some case. <laughs> yeah yeah give me a kick kick some case roll let's Hell see yeah. how well your cleaning solution to the gullet works uh oh see boy, how clean the solution is i do have a negative one tough six <laughs> Oh, okay. All right. Uh, let me take a look at the moves. I mean, spoiler. So that is Mark EXP. Yep. Okay. So kick some case. So on a miss, you get your ass kicked instead. <laughs> you suffer harm or get captured, but don't inflict any harm back. Uh, so this thing is, I mean, this thing is just latching onto your face and is going to be uh so it's got like a long kind of snaky tongue uh so it's it's putting that around your neck and the rest of it is just chewing uh so you take two harm as it gets bitey (laughs) okay so franklin uh, sighs and starts coming out of the vent back into the room (laughs) yeah so arnie your speech does not land at all it seems like everybody else has uh other tasks they're focused on (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all right so i i'm gonna go help mads and i think i'll do that using what could go wrong whenever you charge into immediate danger without hedging your bets hold two you may spend your hold <sighs> to i don't know if it's applicable so but it feels like it i is. i don't i don't think so in this case the fight's already right. going i think it's I, when I you're going like from a, zero oh, to a, okay. when you're going from zero to 100 like oh, okay okay if you initiated the conflict you would get it then yeah yeah, so if you, uh for example when the one guy had um opened the door and you just charge at it, that might have been a yeah. what could go wrong. But w- what could go wrong is already going wrong. Yeah, it's gone uh, fair, enough. fair enough. Yeah. What fair has enough. gone wrong? Lots. Yeah. So you have three options in a fight. Uh so this is oh, where was it? Da-da-da, fights. Fights is page 121 if you want to go down to it. Uh so you have options of kicking some case protecting someone or helping another hunter now the one thing i will say is there is a guy that is probably going to attack you i've been trying to find the rules for what happens when you ignore a threat in combat and i can't find it because i don't necessarily attack on my own i don't roll anything well you can force us to roll kick some case is basically how it goes so you you force the interaction is what it is okay okay so that works so in that case i'm actually going to say arnie you really don't have much of a choice uh in this because the guy who is at the door 
uh, is going for you. Uh, and you don't have much much of a choice to do anything else at the moment. Uh, so you're going to have to uh, roll to uh, kick some corporate. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Love it. So oh, I got a four. Oh. Okay. Well, I was going to, so... my thing that I was going to say is irrelevant. <laughs> okay. Because cause so. I, I know it's, this is currently forming it as turns, but I know that like, Help out, for example, has to be done while other role is happening. And I think that protect someone is supposed to be used alongside them taking harm as well. I could be wrong. Yeah. Let me look at protect someone because, yeah, it's a little bit too late for uh, help out. Yeah, help out wouldn't have uh, – the a five, I can't fix that. <laughs> I can't fix the five. You're also uh, – I, I wouldn't have done it anyways, so, but it was more just like oh, this, okay. this is a format okay. moving forward question. Yeah, so I, I will say uh, help out – you i think i would let you you can say you're helping out before you see what the role is mm -hmm, yeah uh or you have to say you're helping out before you see what the role is yeah because yeah. otherwise or maybe it's one of those that under pressure you can only help out preemptively but if it's like a more sustained thing like investigating then you can help out whenever uh mm -hmm. at least that's the rule i'm gonna roll with protect someone but can be used retroactively because it's when somebody's about to take damage yeah before you uh, figure out my demise here, um, can I use luck and change it to 12? Yes, oh, you yeah. can. Right. Okay. Uh, and I just okay. mark one, right? Like, Quite, so I just mark it on the on the thing? For to, balance, yep. maybe we yeah. double luck usage, too. Double? Yeah, I think that's fair. Because yeah. it's yep. otherwise that's way too many 12s for the rest of the session. You you guys have yeah. seven, right? Yep. So we should probably just have I'm three. I'm just going to say you I have think four. Just have ah, yeah. Three? Ooh, four. three or four? I, I would, you know, if the players are saying three is fine, let's go with three. I, I'm good. With okay. Because here's the I thing. Was gonna say I like the failures to in get this us... game. You know? It's true. Okay. Three it is. Yeah. Uh, also, and, and uh, Wander, just so you know, Jonas? I do it like when I find something weird. I When I use luck, I find something weird or even useful. Oh, okay. Uh, well, in that case, that actually does help you a little bit. Uh, so for now, though, you don't. Oh, no, you do actually have a choice because you just reversed your luck. You are kicking some corporate. How are you kicking some corporate? You have a gun in one hand, your pants in the other, <laughs> and this man is coming for a chompy. I fire my pants at them. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, for, for what's going on, the, like, the, the gun is too harm, by the way. Since it came from my sheet, it's too yes. harm, messy, or what is it? To harm, close, loud, and reload. It needs to reload. All right. Oh, no, and I shot it, didn't I? So I, I need to reload it. Uh, so I, I, I need to reload, and <clears throat> I need two hands to fire the gun. So we're dropping trowel. And <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you... Two hand in the you gun. You give... Well... <laughs> I mean, you still got, you still got, are you a tidy whitey guy? Are you a boxer guy? Are you a briefs guy? Just Arnie just is a hundred percent a tidy whitey. Of course. You, you okay. Use, yes. You are straight up the key art from season one of Breaking Bad. That's what You're I was going to say. I was so I, like, it's a you, shot of them from like looking up at you with your legs spread wide, <laughs> holding the gun pointing down. Yeah, you, it's so you, good. You've wave the white flag in front of uh poor franklin <laughs> uh, but in one smooth move you uh you well you don't really have to reload you probably just um uh because it's a revolver or is it a just regular pistol it is a the one i gave him is a holdout pistol oh okay so that does probably need to get reloaded yeah. okay yeah. so somewhere in this process you signal for franklin to toss you a singular bullet it flies through the air as your pants are falling, you grab the bullet, shove it into the holdout pistol, uh, flick it up, and then shoot the the guy. And it's almost kind of magical looking uh, <laughs> to poor Franklin, who is distracted <laughs> by yeah. ass. I uh, yeah, I, I see. Like Frank, one of Franklin's eyebrows goes up. That's all you <laughs> notice. Like okay, so. Uh, one thing as part of rolling a 10 on, uh, kick some corporate is you get the, uh, you get to do one of four things. You can gain the advantage. So you gain one forward or give one forward to another hunter. Uh, that gives you a plus one on your next roll. Uh, you can do extra damage. 
you can suffer less damage yourself, or you can force them where you want them. Uh, so you can knock them back, move them around, do whatever. Uh, and this does two harm already, right? Yep, it does two yes. harm. All right. So, yeah, I don't know the context of that would. Do. So I think I'm going to try to to force that person back outside the door. Okay. Uh, door's barricaded. How would that work? All the yeah. Time so, barricaded. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, then I would I would do plus one harm to. to okay. Them. Uh, so he does still manage to get, like, a scratch off on you, uh, for one harm. All right. Uh, but you, you just obliterate the guy. Ooh. Uh, cause that's three harm and he is not durable. He, I would say he folds like a cheap suit, uh, but you put dynamite in the cheap suit and went, uh, watched <laughs> it go off. Uh, yeah. and you are all kind of showered by purple goo. Oh my. Huh. Ooh. So you you killed the intern. No, wait, the man. No, no, the, the intern's the, outside. This was yeah. the one drone that was accusing uh, yeah. Johnny Mops of disruption. Gotcha. Okay. So and we still have like a briefcase. from the movie Scanners, right? Like just yes. Okay. So uh, you guys are now alo almost alone in the room, except for Mads has a new violent hat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so... Uh, we, Franklin, we I guess it's your turn in all of this now. Yeah. Um, oh boy. As far as, oh God, I'm trying to think if, uh, it feels dangerous to <laughs> risk shooting a gun at the briefcase on the head of, you do have a crowbar in your hand. I know, but I, I guess, oh, do I know what kind of harm that would do? Probably one, I'd assume like on par with a uh... knife. Uh, a crowbar a is a two harm hand oh, useful messy. Oh, it's better than a knife. Huh. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll 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 try and like go in and I'll actually try and literally like pry it off, like with a, like a pry mm. smack combo. Oh, okay. I hope you roll so low. I don't know why. Uh, rude. You gonna help me? No, I'm, I'm gonna. gonna help me? <laughs> I would imagine this could be a man's I help roll. I would hope. I would yeah. love to help you out if it's possible. Okay. So give me two help out and one. Is Franklin helping? I wonder. Oh, yeah. Oh, I will say I get. Let's see. I already have a 12. I got an 11 plus one. Don't, I mean. Okay. Don't even bother. You also get so, another plus one as I roll a seven for my helping you. I get a 13, which. <laughs> I don't know if we go with the. I don't think we go with the other rules where you get to use the advanced version if you go over twelve. But I am gonna not. I'm good with. Let's see. What is this? What is the advanced version for this? Because I you can, don't um, see. I don't actually have that. It's basically just. Uh, you. Hold, I'll give it to you here. Okay. You hold the advantage. All hunters involved get plus one on their next roll, or you suffer no harm back. Your attack does double damage, or your attack drives them away in a route. So, I feel like... With... So, I, I was going to say, any damage that you would take here is actually just Mads taking the damage because it is only in a position to harm him. Yeah, I would say... And this count, this does count as an, well, yeah, an, an attack. Oh, God. Yeah. I think that I would try and double the damage. I think I would try and, like... Like, it'd be nice to get this off without a hitch... But I think it'd be even better if we could try and guarantee the threat is completely neutralized. I think it's just like Franklin's okay. really thinking about that vent, and he's like, "All right, I, I'll get this thing off if it'll get you guys off my back." <laughs> and I, so I try and pry smack for four harm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I love it. Uh, yeah. So you you I you break this thing in half. It's not very durable. In fact, most of these things seem to actually be pretty flimsy. Uh, but it does manage to get one last chew on Mads' face before you've completely destroyed it uh, for one more damage. Oh, wait, had you already taken... Oh, no. I didn't know if you already took one. Yeah, so Mad Mads is looking kind of rough. Mm -hmm. I, I, I thought, am now unstable. I, wait, I will say there is a first oh, aid kit in the room. Well, that's good. I will say I did not hear the part where you took two. I knew that Arnie took one. That is... I, yeah, yeah, I'm sitting on two harm right now, total. Yeah, I, you can switch it if you want him to take no damage. Okay, I'll, I I think oh, no, that that's I'm, it's probably. I'm okay with this. Like, I, I mean, there's I a first aid happily, kit, okay. anyways. But 
Yeah, I th- yeah. Okay. I think I don't think we retcon stuff. I think that's how Franklin would do it. I, Franklin doesn't know Mads like at all. Uh, okay. Yet. Still at this point, I don't know if they've talked. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think that killing the case would probably be more important than protecting the person he doesn't know yet. So okay, yeah. so, and yeah, there's you, a first aid just, kit. So yeah, so you just break the thing in half. There is it's you've made a mess of this room, and uh, you have a moment to spare. I'm assuming it's first aid kit, kit time. That takes I, a couple, like a minute, maybe. I say Franklin <laughs> grabs the first aid kit and throws it at Mads. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mads is going to catch it, and if the uh, vent is open, jump in. Okay. So you hop in the vent, and it takes you into kind of a small little service cor- corridor. Uh, mm-hmm. It's very thin, it's kind of claustrophobic, and it's quite dark. There's like a very, very pale yellow light from some kind of runner lights going along the top. And it looks noticeably older than the already outmoded looking building. Mm-hmm. Uh, if possible, uh, I would like to round a corner, if there is one, uh, and huddle down to start uh, providing first aid to myself. So it it seems to kind of just go a long direction, uh, or mm-hmm. it, in both directions a long way, sorry. Uh, the one thing you notice is that there is a kind of weird, loud, it's not a roar. It it sounds like um, wind going through a lot of paper all at once. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's coming from ahead of you, and then behind you is quiet. Hmm. I needless to say, I've hopped down the vents. It's the it, vents been important, so I'm like slowly coming up. Okay. Behind. Uh, so Arnie, the thing you find something useful. Um. Oh yeah, that's right. For the luck, forgot about that. You find a blowtorch. No. Oh my god. All right. I uh, I pick up said blowtorch and uh, follow suit with uh, the rest of the group in the vent. I look back and say, where'd you get that? <laughs> I said, it was, it was, weirdly enough, it was behind the guy I shot. Okay. It was right near the door. Oh my God. <laughs> and you had time to get the blowtorch, but not your pants? <laughs> <laughs> Priority. Uh, what is this, what is the status of Arnie's pants? Are you just going full, <laughs> full leg now? Uh, no, I, I still got, like, they're, they're, they're ankle biters at the moment. Oh. Uh, Okay, yeah. so you're just shuffling, shuffling along. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, I, I would say that probably halfway down this vent, uh, we we kick them off. But I'm waiting to see if I can use it as a distraction for something. Okay. Uh, uh so, yep. <laughs> may I, before I forget, may I use my final connect the dots to ask the same question I have asked before? A e g. Okay. Can I ask? Where will the next critical event occur? Is that a legal uh, maneuver? Down below. Okay, great. Ooh. I'm marking that off. That's good. That's good enough for me. All right. Okay, so you guys have just hopped in the service entrance. Uh, I guess, what are you doing and where are you going? Um, or service so, hallway? So I'd, I'd like to get a little bit away from the, the vent entrance, you know, fearing the possibility that the barricade comes down and they jump in. Uh, but as soon as I'm like a couple of meters away, uh, I'm going to tend to my wounds because there is purple goop and there are open wounds and I don't want the two to interact. Okay. <laughs> May- uh, you also have purple goop in your hair too. That's true. Uh, th- that's normal purple goop. This is weird purple goop. May- it's the same purple goop. May I <laughs> roll trust your gut to figure Because you're saying this is sure. two different directions, two like disparately different directions. Yes. Yeah. May I roll trust your gut to figure out which direction to go? Okay. Okay. Uh, I got a five, but I am going to burn my luck. Okay. So, uh, I would actually say both are valid, but the whooshing noise is more valid. Okay. All right. I I say, with, without even mentioning anything out loud, actually, I think Franklin starts trudging towards the whooshing noise and just, like, maybe, maybe like a, the faintest little hand gesture of like, come on, follow me. But he's just like, you, you'd really have to be looking to see it. Boy, Franklin does not seem like someone I'd actually personally like in real life. <laughs> well. <laughs> but Arnie loves it. I mean, if you say so. Okay. I would, so, I would say that for, for me, uh, I would, you know, looking at, at Mads stabbing himself with syringes, uh, 
trying to make himself feel better. I mean, it's probably just like a gazillion band-aids on the many bite marks. Bite holes? I'm thinking they're all like kids bandages as well. So they've got yeah. like so good. little, little oh, like character. There's gold. one of them is a minion's bandage. And I'm like, <laughs> I mean, that one turns this to one goes on the hands. back of the neck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that was an artifact. That was a special. That <laughs> yeah. It was just a case <laughs> of a collection. F- Franklin weeps for a moment because he knows how much that was worth. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. That was, uh, so that was probably I, integral uh, to the plot. That was important. Do I heal one immediately as a result of yeah. using the first aid? Yes. Yeah. So I, I think I'm just going to play video game logic here. You find a med kit, and as long as you're not in combat, you can heal one. Unless it's a big med kit, and then it's two. Sick. And then if you find I... a green herb and combine them together, then it's a full <laughs> heal. I look around for green herbs. <laughs> it, it, if you become unstable, are you permanently unstable, or do you get back to, to normal? So, uh, so unstable wounds require a first aid to become stable, but while you're unstable, things can get worse. Yeah. So I wanted to clear that as quickly as possible. Unstable yeah. being like an injury has happened to you that like could do massive, like it could even do irreparable damage if it gets too bad. Like right. you could lose so a hand. By, fair enough. So by fixing it, no longer unstable. That can't yet. Yeah. Now it's just okay. out. now it's just ouch. Okay. So I was I was thinking for whatever reason I was like uh, mentally and physically unstable. So mm-hmm. but, it's yeah, not I, darkest dungeon rules. Yeah, but my name is Mad. So. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, I would okay. say that Arnie Arnie begrudgingly probably follows Franklin. Um, but grudging. Paid no mind. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. But the view. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and Mads is also going to follow Arnie, believing uh, that wherever Arnie is must be the place to be. I will say that Franklin does feel Arnie's affection for him going away a little bit. And even though he was playing this kind of like, oh, don't you even like, like, this is super annoying. The, now mm-hmm. that it's gone, it is definitely starting. He's like, okay, well, what do I, how do I get, how do I get that attention back without making it too obvious and he uh, i think he like pushes his sunglasses on more and he kind of like straightens up his leather jacket and like pulls up his pants a bit and keeps walking <laughs> oh damn Probably. Probably. just me we're, we're did, uh, franklin get cooler <laughs> <laughs> so you guys follow the uh service hall- hallway down towards the whooshing noise and like it gets louder and louder and louder and it sounds like somebody's uh, it sounds like somebody has put like a thousand newspapers in a room and then it's just like, it was also a wind tunnel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do we see anything different about the hallway? Something that might mark an entrance to this room? It's, yeah, so there, there is very obvious there are two or th- eh, three grates kind of at set distances mm-hmm. uh, in the, uh, I guess in the ceiling that you can see up ahead. Hmm. Cool. I would like to approach the first of the grates and look directly up. Okay. So you look up into the room and it is brightly lit, but it's kind of this like green light. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the the cubicle ocean that you were in earlier was kind of extremely unnatural feeling, uh, but this is eerie. Uh, your character has some experience with magic at least, yeah? Yes, the 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 uh, the magic at our carnival is not all fake. Okay, so this is this is real magic. You can definitely tell. You just can't tell from what, or mm. you can't tell what it is from here. Okay, uh, wraps while you while you juggle whatever you're gonna do. Oh, this is gonna be twenty seconds. I'll be right back. Yeah. All right. All right. So Franklin and or I guess uh Mads. What are you going to do? Are you going to like try and climb up or? I kind of want to get a bit more of a read and try and figure out if I can deduce what the magic is accomplishing. Okay. Is that? Uh... I don't know if there's a, a traditional role for that. There is use magic, which would probably be the closest. Cast an actual thing. Yeah. Mm. I, I do find some of the like light investig. Well, I guess it would be an investigative mystery. Uh, but I will say, like, well. my answers are going to be very limited from this angle. 
Mm, mm. I feel like we basically need to, like, homebrew a couple questions for the investigative mystery list. It feels like it would solve a lot. Yeah. Possibly. Uh, I... Okay, I'll, I'll instead ask, um, Franklin, uh, could you give me a little bit of a both? I want to just see if I could see, you know, anything more in this room, maybe a little bit of a terrain, if there's anyone in there who's going to eat my face again. Uh, I mean, usually I'm the guy who would get the boost, but I, and then he gets, he, it's, sure, and then he helps you out. Are you doing some kind of a roll for it? Is it, is this an actual help out yeah, role? Yeah, from... From nearer to the grate, I would like to try and like inspect the room as much as is possible. You're going to investigate a mystery, use... and I help. Yeah, out. I'm happy to okay, use yeah. investigate a mystery or read a bad situation. I get okay. a help out is a plus cool. Oh boy, it's a it's a ten minus one, so it's a nine again. <laughs> if only Franklin, okay. if, like Franklin, just had like a little bit more cool, he'd be. But I think that just makes sense. Uh, he he just thinks he's cool. He's not. I. I get an eight, so I get your assistance by one, and that takes me up to a nine. Hold on. Yeah. So I will describe, uh, I'm going since to you ask, are closer. What is it going to do in my well, attempt to try and... let me describe the room that you see first. ...deduce the machinations of, of this magic above us. Well, I, I'm going to say I'll explain what you're seeing first, because you actually sure. can see into the room now. Uh, so as you kind of peek your head up, you're still not, like, out of the grate, uh, but you're at least able to kind of see into the room. What you see is kind of this, like, uh, honestly, it looks like a big golden box, and money is just falling out of it. Huh. Well, I think it's a good time to come back. <laughs> and it's, like, a lot of money. Falling out of what? I'm sorry? A big golden box. Hmm. Roughly the size of, like, uh, it's smaller than a shipping crate. I'm trying to think of a good example of, like, how big it would be. Like a school bus? Uh, no, 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 no. No, it's I. Okay, it's not that big. It's bigger than okay. you are, uh, by like a couple of feet. It's not too huge. Maybe the size of a, a closet, that is just like upending thing, uh, upending money. So like a like a bank safe then. Uh, it's smaller than a bank safe, but yeah, okay. kind of in okay. that that general in vein. That. Okay, got it. Hmm. All right. Well, I mean, I'm I'm. You're using me to get a boost. <laughs> so, what is your question, Mads? Perhaps his internet died. Oh no. Oh. Nope. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh no. Uh. <laughs> that's, that's bad timing. It is. We get, should we NPC it? Uh, let's. Give God. It yeah. All right, let's give him like two minutes, and then honestly, what we do is just type out questions. For for perhaps. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds it's awful. Tricky. I mean, uh, I could very quickly remove him from the adventure, but but <laughs> Mads dies. <laughs> 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 the wound was worse than it seemed. Mads <laughs> dies. I'm gonna. I'll tell you what. I'm gonna use the restroom really quick while we. Yeah, sure. Give Raps a minute to and see what we can figure out. I'm just going to put us back in corporate hell intermission style. This is a, a great, by the way. I love that yeah. it's like corporate and it's hell. It's just it's bringing me so much joy from my day to day. I spent the better part of the last two weeks just trying to like figure out what to do. And I kept thinking of control and like, I don't want to ape off of anything directly but I couldn't stop thinking about how much I like the weird, uh, eerie office building vibe. So I was like, I don't know, let's go with this. Uh, I, I guess be behind the scenes a little bit, uh, I've always wanted to do a campaign where everything is a mimic. Uh, so like, if you guys had investigated the uh, fax machine, which I didn't bring up at all, but there was going to be some like other stuff in that room, uh, one of them might have gotten bitey. Very cool. Yeah. I, I agree. Uh, I love the atmosphere of control. Just, yeah. Any luck? Let's oh, no. See. Yeah, still no, still no Rhapsody. Uh, okay. So, you know what? I think I will, uh, I, I think I'll just take controls for a bit and we'll remove him from the situation uh, briefly. So, rather than being able to do whatever he was planning on doing, 
uh one of those uh one of those bots oh uh kind of sticks a claw and grabs mads like it just punches through the grate grabs mads and just flings mads and you're not sure where mads is oh no it doesn't really matter for a moment (laughs) i was gonna do this anyway so like i was just waiting for mads to be here to react because you exposed mads to danger by bumping a pipe and it was loud oh no uh so Mads. Mads will be able to do the thing that they were planning on doing, but uh, surprise robot. Oh no, Mads didn't even tell us what he saw. <laughs> I guess we just have to go home. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I mean, I would imagine that Mads did express what he saw. Yeah. So so Mads logical. was like mid description talking like you guys were quibbling specifically over the size of the yes. golden box. When the claw comes down, grabs Mads and flings Mads. Ow! Punched my table. Oh. Okay. Uh, and does the does this robot grab from like through the vent, or are they in the hall with us? Yeah. Okay. So it it breaks the vent and to I grab Mads. Pulls it up like pulls. Yeah. Mads up horror movie yeah, so style. Y- oh no! Okay. Yeah. So you are technically holding on to Mads. You can hold on to Mads if you want to enter the room very quickly. Um, let's see. Well, this is probably not a time where I could even like. Oh, oh, we got a reps. Potentially. Well, hey. Oh, hey. hey. Congrats! You just got. We got your, a reps. Yoinked okay. into the room. So, we'll, we'll we'll roll back a little bit just to explain. So you are explaining this this golden box. Uh, what was the last thing you heard, by the way? Uh, that I looked into the room. Okay. Uh, so uh, you look into the room and there is a large golden box not particularly huge uh smaller than a safe bigger than you somewhere kind of in that midpoint i guess maybe a little uh, the size of a fridge it is a golden fridge looking thing that is dumping what seems to be an infinite amount of money downwards uh Mm. and as you're describing this you have a bit of quibble with the uh with the other two about the size of this thing at which point a giant metal claw punches through the grate above you Grabs you by the head and flings you into the room. Ooh. Yeah. Guess the Vano. Um, you know, I so, think I, I think Franklin does hold on to Mads's ankle. Okay. I think he comes. So uh, uh give me an act under pressure. Who? Me me for holding on or Yeah. <laughs> Just to see sense. how well you hold on and where you land and how this goes. <laughs> God. Okay. <laughs> uh, act under <laughs> Why does it have to be cool? I have a 10 minus one. It's a nine. So, okay. Worst outcome, hard choice, price to pay. Okay. Uh, so I'll give you a hard choice. Maybe a hard choice. I'll give you a choice. And this is kind of a soft act under pressure. Uh, so you lose contact with Mad, uh, Mads pretty quickly. Like you were holding onto him, but not like grip of death can fly through the air with him in tandem. Yeah. Uh, so you've slipped. You can, A, fall back down, might hurt. Two, grab onto the robot. That's it. Three, I lose my pants. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Not yet. I wouldn't do it anyways. Um, I think I would grab onto the robot. Okay. So you just koala onto the thing. Yeah. Uh, Yep. Uh, Yep. All right. Arnie, you've just seen your two compatriots uh get uh schlucked through a grate yeah that's a good word yeah you like that yeah schlucked <laughs> uh yeah i i think at this point you know uh, it's time to uh to buckle up and uh pull the pants up i think you got to move for um, this even i sorry i got to move i think you i think yeah. this is a time to use your move if you i think this is legal maneuver maybe possibly to use your for di- head into danger perhaps yeah i was gonna say for like what could go wrong i think yeah sure. I, I i don't know yeah. i could see that so, it's more just i wanted to bring it up as a possibility just to see if one well it's fair a giant robot just took two of my compadres so. and yeah I don't know. okay so whenever you charge into immediate danger without hedging your bets hold two you may spend them to your hold to inflict one harm reduce someone harm suffered by one or take two forward and an act under pressure roll 
two forward being I think just like I want... plus two on the next. Plus two on the next or plus yeah. one on two. Yeah. So it makes like my act under pressure better. Yeah. I'm not going to inflict harm. And there hasn't been... How forceful was the robot? Like, uh, is there is there going to be harm? I guess would it would what I think there is. They haven't been hurt yet. Okay, so really, but it's yeah. It does have giant crab claws, so this thing can hurt. Yes. All right. So I think I will do the the take two, uh, plus two forward and act under pressure, and I am going to try to grab onto Franklin's ankles as. If, okay. If I, I assume I can. Give me an right? act under pressure, I guess. Yeah. We're just man chaining the Is way out. Is there a way I can help this somehow? <laughs> can, I don't, I probably not. Not so from where you are, I don't think. Two, six. Just, uh, it, it's, it's a six. A uh, five, actually, because it's a cool roll. Uh, yeah, cool. It's a five. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> I wish it's you roll. Oh, why not? <laughs> Wait, that's... I had rolled a four, a three and a one. <laughs> a three to one, and then you get the plus two, and then a minus, or what? And then a minus one, cool, yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> uh, I was cool I once. Man catapult? <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to think. On a miss, things go to hell. How would that go to hell? Because, like, my first instinct that's is a you lot just of momentum. a feel as he goes by. <laughs> I, you know, it's going to sound You know so what? Stupid. You know, I know what you do. <laughs> oh. Steal Franklin's pants no. as he's going by. Hey, no. I didn't fail the roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a benefit for Arnie. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that would have been Arnie's 12. <laughs> it's not fair. Uh, okay. So, un unfortunately, that also takes Franklin's revolver. No. All right. Wow. Interesting. So now I'm, I'm sitting here with, I could pick up said revolver and have a revolver, a pistol, and a blowtorch. <laughs> wow, this, fails, this fail went really well for you. <laughs> <laughs> and two pairs of pants. And so bad for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, I mean, I am going to pick up the gun, I guess. And... Okay, it's, it's time. I, you know what? Dual wielding. Yeah, dual wielding. <laughs> uh, double, double wielding. Two guns, zero pants. <laughs> no, I got, I got two pairs now. Oh, that's true. You just, yeah, two guns, two pants. They're just not, neither fully on. If you're dual wielding, you're not keeping that pan, those pants up. <laughs> okay, uh, Mads, what mm. do you do? Because you are so. Despite everything, you actually land kind of softly on a giant pile of money. Uh, the one note is the money is draining somewhere, and you don't know where it's going. Mm -hmm. As in, it seems liquid? Uh, no, as in, it's going down a going pipe. Down a hole. It, okay, so to explain this room, because you got a good right. glance as you were flying through the air, it is effectively uh, a fairly large room where multiple of these these golden boxes are just dumping money into... Uh, effectively giant concrete pipe looking things and mm -hmm. uh, you definitely can taste there's a lot of magic in this room uh, so something is going on here beyond just whatever uh, but uh, is the only attendant that I can see the uh, giant robot whose claw pulled us up yeah so this room is weirdly devoid of almost everything except for the robot uh, mm -hmm. it seems like the robot may or may not be kind of the, the watchdog for this room and it heard you guys clunking around. Mm -hmm. There wouldn't happen to be like coffee dispensers or anything in this room, or is it much more austere? It's much more industrial. Uh, mm. This almost looks like uh, what uh, this this company is clearly not on the up and up. And this is like the first time you've really seen what the company really looks like. And it is uh, you definitely can see that there is like magical sigils <sighs> and other stuff going on. Uh, and mm -hmm. there's none of that, like, corporate chic uh, decoration. Uh, the cubicles, the the people in suits, the coffee machines. All of that is gone. This is some kind of weird magical industry going on on the side. Uh, mm -hmm. But you haven't exactly had a whole lot of time to investigate yet, though you do have one hold to ask me at any point. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, do... 
Well, I mean, I, I have to imagine the robot is still bearing down on me, so I'm acting under no, duress. No, so the, the robot is actually uh, kind of flailing uh, because somebody is covering its optical, optical sensor with themselves. Uh, so it's still <laughs> near the grate. Okay, cool. I mean, if the robot's kind of flailing, uh, is it possible that it's near one of these uh, money pit sucky holes? The, the, uh, the quicksand of money? That's a joke. I would say it's about <laughs> 10, 10 feet from the one you're in. 10 feet from the one. Cool. Uh, I would like to start off by trying to escape the, the, uh, the suction of the ground here. Probably good choice. Um, will I have to act under pressure, or is that just like get up yeah. and walk? Yeah, I mean, you're swimming through money. It's not like that's normal. <laughs> you're not Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> oh, baby. Uh, and acting under pressure, I believe, is a cool, that's a 12. Ooh, okay, so you, cool. I mean, uh, you get the distinct feeling you got a McDuck in your line. Uh, so you mm -hmm. get out of that, like, almost no time flat. Mm hmm I suspect, however, this robot probably doesn't have McDuck heritage throwing through his veins. So, no. in anticipation of this, I'm going to try and body check this guy into one of the pits. Okay, uh, you are between it and the pit, so you're going to have to suplex it or something. Ooh, I'm not can I try and strong. Suplex is not a good Can move. I try and like help steer it? If I'm, like, if I'm on its front and optical sensors, is something I can do to try and steer it yeah, towards the pit? So... I guess to get back to you, uh, so this thing is going to start trying to club you off of its face, mm -hmm. uh, but in doing so, you can, you, it has tiny little legs, so it's not exactly the most <laughs> balanced thing, uh, so oh, you can no. kind of monkey around on top of it to tilt it in a direction. Okay. Should I, is that like an act under pressure? Yeah. Oh boy. If I, uh, if I ever fail some rolls and level up, I'm going to put one point in cool. <laughs> That's a 12. So it's an 11. I can't even have my moment. <laughs> it's a 12. So 11 okay. is a, you know, a 10 plus. I okay. get to do, I get to so do you, what I want, is what it says. Yeah. So you more or less, uh, so are are you just kind of leaning in the direction while trying to dodge its blows? I, I'm doing my or best to, doing? yeah, to get it to the pit while taking as little, you know, hits as I can. But the main goal is gearing, getting it into the pit. So I, I'll say you rolled well enough that you probably only just get like a one harm that seems blow. Fair. That seems more than fair. That, uh, you know, it clips you on one of your newly bare legs, uh, leaving God, kind of a nasty jeans. scratch, but that's about it. Uh, <laughs> and, and you are very much managing to steer this robot to the pit where uh where mads is waiting to well i guess mads has probably hopped out and is going to try and body check the thing yeah, yeah exactly. one's a punch. Like to run up behind it said. and just try and shoulder charge okay so i that's a uh kick some shiny metal can mm -hmm. should i also mm, i'm gonna use my first point of luck <laughs> okay <laughs> is there something i should do to like get off of it in time should i roll another you know on Honestly, I'm just assuming you're just kind of on the thing surfing it or something. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of like, I'm good. imagining on the top of it, and I'm like, <laughs> the, the cartoon, I'm like, got my hands on its, what are what would be eyes, even though those probably aren't the eyes. <laughs> yeah. like, you know, full cartoon. Digital yep. uh, eyebrows are just yeah. angry. Oh, you see. <laughs> yeah, even though the, cam <laughs> like the camera for the sensor is somewhere else, like, even though I'm covering up the screen, it's like, oh, no, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> it might even be saying that you're not sure yeah. it could actually be you but it, somebody is going oh no oh man uh it could even be mads you don't know uh so mads roll a uh kick some can uh so i did um oh, and i got a result did that luck. i didn't like so i did luck instead yes so i'll be okay uh, using my 12 okay so your your 12 is i'm assuming to push it where you want it yep i'm gonna see if i can topple him into the pit Okay, so I will say you do take one harm from uh, just shoulder checking a giant metal object. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're back in ouch town. But yeah, you, uh, the two of you more or less just send the thing teetering over into the money pit. And uh, no, it does not have McDuck in its, uh, in its genealogy. And so, uh, frankly, you just managed to hop off. It's not even that hard. Uh, 
It looks fair. You just kind cool. of roll up its back and then just hop off as it goes in. Uh, and you just watch the thing just get buried in money. And there's kind of this like weird, uh, I'm going to say like a, kind of like a weird whoop noise as it goes. And the money pit kind of, uh, I don't want to say like flumps, but a bunch of money gets kind of sent out as whatever the thing happened happens in there. Hmm. And you so, were alone. In I will say, yeah, Franklin's gut told him to something. The next important thing is down is what Franklin got. His hunch. You so, know, you know what's down is Arnie in the other room. Yeah. So yeah. Arnie, uh, you've heard some noises. And... Oh my god! I thought you came. I thought you got flung in. No. No. Oh. He removed pants. So oh, Arnie. Oh my god. Uh, Arnie, the double pants man. What are you doing down there? Oh my god. I'm you, yelling. You I'm yelling through any of this. Yeah, I'm yelling through the grate, trying to get people uh, through it. In and I know that. Uh, it, it's a uh, significant height. So I am fashioning a a rope uh, or, out of or tether out of pants. <laughs> a pantsing hook. So I'm taking both pants and tying them together, and I'm going to toss that into the grate. I'll say Frank with, does come to help. With, uh, okay. with some sort of weight. So I'm I'm attaching yeah. the uh, the water. I, I think I I think I still got no. I got the I got the mouse. I got the the yeah. rollerball mouse. No, not that. And <laughs> okay, the blowtorch. The blowtorch. No, oh, no, 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 <laughs> no. You use the mouse. I just want Franklin use to not mouse. like it. I like it. I don't. I, Franklin okay, doesn't. I, okay. so, so yeah, so I'm gonna toss that up. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what action or if that's an action. <laughs> no, it's not really much. Uh, that's not under pressure or anything so you assist, you yeah. fashion the world's weirdest grappling hook out of <laughs> pants and a mouse uh and toss it up and it has it has enough length to reach and so franklin and mads you just see a computer mouse come sailing out of the grate and just kind of land on the side of it with a clack i grab the mouse and and and, and use it and it gives me enough leverage to then like pull up to actually grab the pants part and start pulling yeah uh Okay. And as I pull you up, I say, I told you the mouse would be useful. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it was connected to all this. Okay. I love it. So you guys and your pants are in the in the weird money room. Uh, what do you do? Uh, I mean, we don't I, have to put pants back on. <laughs> I, I, while you guys decide, Franklin does start start to untie the pants rope and tries to get them back on. Okay. Uh, Mads? With my uh, small knowledge of uh, of, mis uh, of mystery of magic, rather, I, I would like to inspect the sigils and runes on the walls and try and see if I can determine what is happening. It's some pretty hard necromancy. It doesn't even take much. There's skulls everywhere. <laughs> what could that mean? Who? Um, can yeah. I? Well, I mean, so, can we inspect the room? Like, is there is there anything we haven't yeah, noticed in so, the room? Basically, yeah. It is not nearly as large as the cubicle ocean uh, that you were in earlier, but it is a fairly sizable kind of industrial foundry type room, except for instead of pouring molten metal, it's pouring money. Uh, and it's, it's as far as you can tell, just totally normal currency. Uh, I, yeah, you guys wouldn't be able to inspect dollars for authenticity, so we're not even going to bring up that. I don't even know if they're authentic or not. Mm. Uh but there is, yeah, just six, maybe nine. I, I'm not entirely sure. It's kind of this weird thing, and you're not really sure why it exists here or what it's doing, but it is just dumping money from golden uh, golden fridges into giant yeah. pipes. Do we so hear anything coming from down where the money's being poured other than the money being poured? There's kind of like a, a low-key hum this whole time. Okay. Um, but beyond sure. that, there's no like weird horror monsters or anything like that. Okay. Go ahead, so, uh, yeah, it, it's all good. Um, I did level up, by the way, right. on on my terrible roll. Uh, that 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 was another one. Um, you grab a little something, some. I grab a little something. Some. I take another mundane move. I have been rolling awful, by the way. Um, hey, anyway, it helps I'm working out. I I'm taking another mundane move, and I'm taking oops. And oh, it's, if I you want to stumble it. across something important, tell the keeper. You will find something import important and useful, although not necessarily related to your immediate problem. I would like to use oops. Okay. And, and stumble uh, across something important. So you, oops, 
And yeah. A different uh, computer mouse. You find uh <laughs> you find kind of a cast off clipboard, and on it is a spreadsheet, and it is uh all it says at the top is just uh it's not quotia, is it? Uh OSHA? No, it is quotia. Quotia is when you have to like hit a certain limit. Oh, a oh, quota. There we quota. go. Not quotia. Quota. Yeah. Uh, it's the it just way. says across the top, sole quota, and then oh, it's just a bunch of numbers going down, and then money uh, next to it, and the numbers keep getting getting bigger. Oh. Hmm. So I, I obviously will will show Franklin and Mads be like, guys, look at this clipboard. There is something sinister going on. It's so what what do you think this is like they're there's clearly doing something with this big machine and the the work that we were doing is it corporate death note <laughs> <laughs> excel excel death death note <laughs> yeah I mean, if you write down a business name in you know 24 <laughs> hours it goes bankrupt um so it says the soul it has the soul quota and then it has the the profits are going up and like the soul quota is going up too is that Yes. Yeah, okay. Hmm. And do we notice there there's not like any machinery or like switches or anything in this room for this foundry thing? No, not really. As far it, as uh Ma Mads would be able to tell you the whole thing is set up with magic. And I even you can tell there's like sigils and runic stuff and glowy lines and uh this seems a little bit beyond your your uh current capabilities as far as yeah. like diagnosing how it works. I'd say these symbols are familiar, like I've seen them as I've, like, you know, examined symbols, but I have not traced them to being magic. I'd say that Franklin is yeah, not aware I, of magic. Yeah. So this is on Mads. Uh, yeah. Franklin, I have great news. Great. They fidget with magic. Okay. <laughs> like. In particular, you see how there's skulls everywhere? Yeah. It's pretty necromantic, isn't it? You know, like skulls, dead people, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. Magic is much more simple than you might think. The sigils are all pretty, you know, uh, uh, obvious on the face of it, you know? I can't really tell you what the spell in general is doing, but if I had to guess, based on that quota in the symbols, I think these holes turn people into money. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Can we... Is, are, they, are the sigils, like, are they marked on there, or are they, like chiseled in like yeah they're mean, chiseled in they're not okay. drawn and this I, is a little bit more permanent but it is also gold in the uh floaty things so you could probably like bat them out if you wanted to i was actually thinking of using my blowtorch to <clears throat> okay yeah to try uh, to just like interact or, or melt one of them use blowtorch okay. so on the thing i want to say is so no the, you uh, on, the, on, on maybe on the sigils actually. no yeah 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 no Sl no slash no, no the foundry makes sense yeah, no no yeah. i don't know I wasn't trying. Okay, so I, I guess to describe, there's uh, one set that's kind of more reachable that seems to be centered around the uh, giant concrete pipes uh, or pits or basins or whatever they are. Um, and then there's also more sigils that are not easily within reach uh, that are up on those golden casket looking things. I think I would go for the ones that I can reach. Uh, given okay. how our shoulder pyramid uh, went <laughs> before... <laughs> It's probably a good thing. I would I would like to use the blowtorch on sigils that I can reach. Let me just leave it at that. Okay. Yeah. So I walk uh, over and I, I light the blowtorch because uh, I know how to do that because I'm a hobbyist plumber. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Some of the toughest jobs uh. use use a blowtorch. <laughs> melt melt solder with on <laughs> copper pipes. <laughs> yeah. True. I okay. So you're just gonna go to town on the sigils on the nearest pipe next to you? Yeah, yeah. I see the nearest okay. sigil, like the skull, and I'm like, I, I something is is compelling me to try to melt it or disrupt okay. the spell. I no. I guess Mads, I should probably mention the necromancy is around the the fridge box looking things, the golden boxes. Um, the the magic down below is not as familiar to you. Okay, so. Uh, Arnie just starts going to town and you can tell like almost immediately that whatever you're doing is causing some problems. The, uh, the, the money pit is just starting to like spark and then huh. probably burn 
Because, like, whatever you're doing is is breaking it bad. And, uh, and so, like, depending on when you stop, I'm assuming you're just going until whatever. Uh, yeah, no, I, 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 see, I see that happening, and I keep going. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so tell me, tell me when you want, uh, want me to stop and I'll, I'll try and just describe as it goes. So you just keep cutting away. And so the money is starting to burn. Uh, and for the most part, it's not really a threat to you guys, but, uh, there is definitely a small, uh, currency fire in the center of the, uh, the one nearest to you. And, uh, then I guess as you go a little bit further, it almost starts to kind of, uh, reverse for a little while so it's actually getting more money and then it's starting to get a little dicey uh because wherever some of that money was is starting to come back up uh oh. and uh, let's see i guess after a little while more of that it uh it spits out half the mech yeah and, and that seems like a good good time to stop. okay yeah so you stop so it's uh raining money out of both ends uh and uh so Sees the robot. I think the robot's actually still going. It is missing an arm and like probably its lower legs, but it can still kind of claw and move around. Uh, and it is kind of nearish the grate. Uh, and it is kind of making this like zappy whirring noise and might or might not be where the fire was coming from. Uh, because all the money near it is catching on fire. Hmm. The room is slowly filling with money. Even after the blowtorch has stopped? Yeah. I, it's still blowing upwards out of the uh, the one that he he was disabling. Like whatever whatever he's done, it's stuck in reverse now. Oh no! I was gonna say that was a mistake. Uh, Franklin <laughs> is was it? Franklin starts like sweating and then <laughs> sees that interacting with the sigils does something. Grabs his gun and shoots the far ones with his gun. Oh, okay. Uh, give me a blind act under pressure. Blind act under pressure. That is a. I mean, I swear, I swear, that is a ten minus one. I'm questioning. You know what? It's seven o'clock. I'm using my luck. Okay. Hell yeah. So you, uh, you having paid attention to where things changed, and when you shoot bullseye every other target on whatever the kind of important sigil was uh on those and the room gets quiet after six shots or five shots ring out and the room gets mostly quiet the one next to you is still going uh because you didn't shoot those but uh the the money is no longer draining from those rooms or from those uh pipes so it is still filling up but it's not like bat uh blowing outwards mm. like the one next to you okay and were those uh, the ones that the said, sigils on the wall next to us interacted with, as far as we could tell? Yeah, so the lower half of the room has gotten kind of dim. Mm -hmm. Like, you you shut it off, you just don't know how or why or what. Mm -hmm. uh, the one thing I will say is, you hear a noise. Like, kind of a, a loud, angry, like, thrumming from below. So you've done something. I think we. I mean, we got to investigate, right? I mean, I think that we maybe turned off uh, somebody's dinner, perhaps. Mm -hmm. but... Or we're gonna feed dinner. Oh, now you're in a horror movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I think we. I think we have to investigate the sound from the hole. Yes, absolutely. From, okay. from the money hole. Yeah. Okay. So slash the uh, hole. Yeah. So. Wait, are you going to try and climb into one of the pits? Or, well, I or... want to. I think we want to see what's going on with the hole slash, if we can tell what's going on down the hole. That's a bonus. I think okay. we use our our newly found human ladder technique, and <laughs> between the three of us, uh, Matt and two pants, Franklin, and, and if you need pants. my pair of pants, you're more than welcome. <laughs> we turn around, and Mads' pants have already been taken off. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Oh yeah, no pants party. Heck yeah. <laughs> I think uh, if if Mads is good with it, we try to, you know, create like a, a human ladder so we we lower Mads into the hole. So Franklin holds Mads. into one of the money, the one that is currently like firing money upwards. Uh, no, like one of the ones that like we he won't take. Uh, okay. I was going to say loonies to the face, but 
I got it. Yeah. Okay, so you go into one of the inert ones. Uh, now, yeah. fair fair point. Money is still being endlessly dumped onto this, so it's quickly becoming quite the pile. Uh, but Mads having a McDuck in their family line. Yep. Uh, you guys get Mads over the over the lip of the the pipe thing, uh, which isn't even that tall, and they just kind of swim under. Mads, well, you're down there. You still have that hold if you want to ask anything. Um, but Which question find... list was this from? What was that? Which question list was that from? Investigate a mystery? Yeah. Cool. Uh, so inside you find uh, it is a, a giant, like, magical circle. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> just, is, is, does this open up into a, a room that contains that magical circle or is it just a giant magical circle at the bottom of this pit? At the bottom of the thing. And it, it seems to be uh, currently out of commission. Hmm. How far, how far down is it? Uh, maybe like 10, 15 feet. Like it goes deeper than the actual thing. Okay. Uh, if possible, I would like to deploy my investigative mystery to ask, what was it going to do? So, uh, despite the fact that you don't exactly know what the magic itself does, you do notice that it it uh, it has some like infernal symbolism. Mm -hmm. uh, your best guess is that this money was going to uh, somewhere else entirely, and uh, you've just cut off the money flow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna clamber and swim my way back up to the surface to recount what oh. I've heard. Oh, okay. And like, oh, what'd you find? Yeah, so you tell us. Can I throw a proposal out? Yeah. And can we like lock arms and jump into this potential portal? <laughs> oh my god. I mean, there's only one active and is on reverse. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna go out and say we could probably just stop the money from teleporting to hell dimension rather than go yeah. there. That uh, sounds good to me. <laughs> I. All right, fine. Democracy wins. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh, all right. So I guess we we try and use the sigils on the to turn off the ones that are still going. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, now knowing what to shoot for, it's actually pretty quick to uh, pretty quick to disable the last one. The one thing to note is that the money is still flowing into the room, so it's actually getting kind of hard to move through it. Mm -hmm. Uh but you wade your way over to the where you remember the last of the sigils was and disable it with the blowtorch. And now the room is just, like, knee-deep in money. Hmm. Okay. I mean, I, I would imagine we try and make our way to the... I'd try to make my way to the door that we know existed, but with a vent, I the guess. The door oh, the great. Shoot. Yeah. Are there any doors? I mean, I hadn't... When I, there is a door. At, uh, on the other end of the room, there's a staircase going... Up to like a landing, and then there is a door. I think we probably. Oh God, do we go for that? Maybe, gang. I think we have to. Yeah, we're not yeah, going down. Think that of the vent. tunnel. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if the vents open, money should be theoretically going down there too. Anyways, so. Uh, all right, we make our way for the 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 staircase and the door. Okay, so as you're doing this, you do actually. Uh, you hear a noise behind you as uh, a handful of the uh, drones kind of come crawling out of the uh, the smoldering money pile where the uh, the vent was. Oh, good choice. And they're, they're like slogging their way towards you with a little bit more haste than you're used to. Hmm. And they're like hmm. full on teethy, mouthy, horrible looking. Hmm. Uh, but you guys go up the stairs, uh, up the landing and out the door. Yep. Where do we into, find ourselves? Uh, so you find yourself in kind of like the the service hallway. It is a very uh, it's a very rundown kind of old thing. It hasn't been dolled up at all. Nobody nobody has paid any attention to like maintenance beyond just keeping it functional. And like it, it very much is just this industrial hallway. Uh, more or less across it it goes like a long way in both directions. And then across from you is a uh, a door for a staircase that leads mm -hmm. upwards, uh, and you can you can see like it's clearly marked uh, to potentially bring you back up to where you were uh, earlier. It brings you back to the cubicle C. All right, interesting, interesting. Um, yeah, the, just... uh, 
the noise, by the way, the the kind of angry, gnashing, roaring noise uh, is louder to your right. Mm. Um, just a quick question. Uh, either of you fools want to beat a quick retreat out of here? Like, is that your deepest desire, either of you? <laughs> I will say Franklin has a deep curiosity about what the thing yelling is. But Okay, as, Franklin's as, out. As, as, yep. But I, I think I gotta say, I, I am curious. Uh, I am. <clears throat> how how close? Sorry, if I missed it. How close is the the rumbling? Is it like an immediate danger? No, but it sounds like there is something that direction that is very angry at whatever you did. I mean, you guys, I, you don't want to check it out. Right? I ain't gonna stop you. I'm, I now listen, Franklin. As as a like someone who wants to see how this all like everything pieces together. I think he'd be unsatisfied going home, not knowing. Okay. Yeah. That's a fair I, point. Yeah. I kind of wish I'd, I put, uh, don't worry, I'll check it out as my, my other mundane skill. <laughs> well, I mean, I think the, you know, charge into danger definitely would apply for yelling, running into a grumbling, yelling monster. So at least you got mm, that. That's true. Um, but yeah, no, it's so, okay. So Franklin's going up, up the stairwell. Um, or no, so Mads is. Uh, Franklin, you're just standing there in between us two. I think, yeah, I'm definitely yeah. going. I I gotta find out what what. Yeah, this, this I sound I is. think Franklin, okay. you're doing what Franklin wishes he felt confident enough to do. Look, you you don't become a hobbyist plumber without having some sort of uh, chutzpah about it. So, I'd say this is the party. most Franklin has been. Like, okay, I might like this guy. Like as you charge so, headlong. Yeah, so Ar Arnie, with a blowtorch in one hand and a holdout pistol in the other, just goes running down the hallway. Uh, still pantsless, but you know at this point, everybody's beyond caring. Yeah, Frank uh, Franklin starts chasing after him, and at this point, his pants were back on, but as he starts chasing, he unbuttons, <laughs> unzips, and just starts pulling his <laughs> pants off to chase. <laughs> Godspeed, Arnie! Godspeed. Uh, aerodynamics. <laughs> uh, Matt, what are you doing? Uh, at this point, I think I'm still just uh, following uh, Franklin as okay. uh, I have failed to make a deal with anyone. Okay. So you, you guys just go charging down the hallway. And like, apart from the clearly angry whatever it is, it's actually kind of quiet down here. There's not much. There is clearly signs that a lot of people have been by. And even more than that, uh, you start to notice, like, clothing and cast-off stuff uh, and just kind of piles of it. And there's, like, side rooms that you're going by that are dark uh, that seem to just have a lot of stuff in them for some reason. Like, it would look almost as if a person was vanished on the spot and all their belongings were left. Yeah. Perhaps. Like yes. Yeah. Yes. They got. Yes. They got raptured. Yes. Uh, yeah. I would say. Oh gosh. Because and then we had the sheet of the souls into money. I think Frank Franklin would be piecing together in his head. He'd be like, "This is where they turn the people into money," and he's used to being to sounding crazy, and he's not sure if that's like, he's like this actually might make sense, but he says it out loud, and. He starts, I mean, I don't know. I keep walking forward towards the noise, I guess, as long as Arnie is. I'm following Arnie to the okay. ends of the earth at this point. Yeah, I mean, I got, when you, when you got your torch out, yeah. I have a saying, yeah. torch is out, okay. gun's out. So I'm not going to put him up. Where am I going to put him? I and get Mads is still falling along? I get my, yep. I get a gun in one hand, and then I get my flashlight, often called the torch for some, in the other hand, Ooh. and I follow uh, suit. Okay. Can Mads I withdraw a that. pocket knife? I was actually going to say that um, maybe as the coolest thing Arnie has ever done, tosses the pistol back to Mads. Ooh. I'll say I do turn on so the flashlight okay. as well. So we've okay. got... Good a, a call on that. So more or less, as you're doing that, you've entered into this, uh, this room. Oh, right. I have to turn these off. There we go. So oh, you've hello. entered into this room, and then you flip the flashlight on, to this room. Hello. Oh, hello uh, there. So, uh, n n none of you guys would know what a mimic probably is because it's not normally inside your lexicon, I'd assume. Uh, but for everybody else, you find 
the world's largest mimic uh, that is uh, poorly rendered. It's fused with the building. It kind of has roots growing out of the bottom of the chest. And those roots are up and around the whole the whole building's like basement is covered in these roots. And I would have mentioned it earlier if you had the flashlight on uh earlier. Uh like even Rip. in the service hallway. Mm -hmm. Uh Rip. but this this giant mimic is is just here and it is roaring and it is angry and uh it doesn't look too good. Like it looks kind of crazed. Uh like you might have messed with it somehow. With the uh, uh, the money portal thing. Hey, Wander? Yeah? Is this a bad situation? It's a bad situation. <laughs> All right. Is this perhaps... Wait, so can multiple people roll read a bad situation? I guess I don't know how that works. I, I don't, you do, know, I'm going to limit it, probably, yeah, unless you have a reason. I I mean, does anybody else want to do the roll? I have plus sharp. I No, nah, you should. Okay. I got, I got one plus one, but yeah, I, I've been rolling off. I... You am a god. That's a 14. Okay. Wow. Uh, uh, does that give you the advanced version? Theoretically. Yeah, sure, why not for this? You may yeah. ask for the today? keeper any question you want about the situation, including something that's not listed, is what it is. Okay. Says. Ask away. Uh, no, I have a... Yeah, okay. Uh, what do we do to kill this thing? Okay. Which, which is similar uh, to one of the questions. It's fleshy mouth. It's got a big fleshy mouth and it looks pretty flammable. What with the old dry wood uh, that is comprising its lower and upper half. Guys, I see how uh, the pieces fit together <laughs> because I'm a flake. Uh, <laughs> and, the one uh, thing I will also say as a bonus for you for rolling that high is uh, it only it doesn't move apart from the tongue. Oh, so if you can okay. if you can tie it, it's gonna be easier. All right, I start to relay this information, and I, I start uh, barking orders, even, at this point. I say, Mads, if you can tie the tongue, Arnie, you can set it on fire. And then I just start, I don't know, what do I have? I don't think I have anything that's... You have guns! No, 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 <laughs> that start, that's, I was going to say, that starts <laughs> with fire. Ah. I don't think I have anything, anything myself that starts with fire, so I... I... If only we had pants, Mads. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Sorry. We we need your pants. <laughs> we need your pants. To, oh, to light them on fire and toss them in. Oh. I'll light them on fire. That's uh, it. I, I it's say like you cut to Mads and Mads is wearing pants. You cut back to uh, uh, Arnie and Arnie says, we need your pants. And you cut back to Mads and Mads is no longer wearing pants. <laughs> it's just instant. Actually, technically, I think they're overalls, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, that's true. So I'm just wearing a white tee. I'm I Winnie say, the Pooh in it. I say, Arnie. I'm Winnie the Pooh in it. Arnie, you're going to have to burn your shirt. <laughs> All right. I, I take off my shirt, ball it up with the, the overall. Start it on fire and throw it in the mimic. Throw it light, at the mimic. Light the it wood. up and throw it. And throw, throw it at the it wood. At the yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to say this is a... Uh, an impromptu kicks uh kick some root burn burn some root can burn we help root. somehow yeah yeah if you want to help uh more or less by probably tying the tongue up that is okay a, like that. Whoop. well that is a five so your help grants them no oh, no that's a five that's nothing i'm just you expose yourself to danger i guess Okay, so that, that's on a seven uh, or nine. It, it doesn't even say that for a five or a six or less, but I'd assume it's worse than a seven and nine. It help out. Well, no, on a miss, you expose yourself to trouble or danger. So oh. that's that's uh, six and lower. I think a different sheet has so, it listed better because mine yeah. doesn't have that. Oh, so you get okay. you give me plus one. Okay, okay. So uh, you see, you see Arnie going to to chuck the the fire shirt at uh, the nearest root. And this thing has a big, long, kind of a stretchy, extendy tongue. And you see it going for Arnie to stop him. And you just dive into it. Uh, and more or less, it just, like, immediately snaps you up instead. Uh, it's only going to do one harm as it kind of wraps around you and starts crushing. Remember uh, me! But... As I take only one harm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, 
Arnie, did you did you roll the uh oh what was it? Burn I some root. Kick burn some, burn some root. Burn yeah. some root. So I rolled a seven plus one with the help. So okay. Eight. Uh so that is I think you still just do it, you just take some damage. So uh I guess it's just gonna bonk you with Franklin as you're doing it. So you do manage to to set the root on fire. Uh and that's right. starting to burn. Would that uh, be but you two, two harm. Uh, so it only does one harm at the start, but it's going to okay. keep taking harm because it is now on fire. Uh, okay. But you do also take uh, two harm as you just get hit by a, f- a flailing man <laughs> with uh, the approximate force of a cro- uh, crowbar. Can you do something about this tongue, Mads? <laughs> I look down at the gun. And look up at the tongue, and look down at the gun, and look up at the tongue. <laughs> yeah, grab the bow. I'm gonna aim at one of the eyes uh, on the tongue, and uh, okay. try and take a shot. Ooh. Oh, oh, uh, that'd still be a middle success. I'm gonna use a point of luck to turn that into a full success. Twelve. Okay, so you just uh, you just shoot one of the eyes, and it, I, it immediately drops franklin as oh. it like recoils in in pain and Do anguish I take a and burning i learned damage. that one from resident evil nah, you're good if uh if you had rolled lower uh then you would have taken the damage for falling all right okay franklin you are falling a brief distance to the ground it's oh, hard no. but it's not that hard uh you are oh. also really close to this thing and it's got kind of a gnashy mouth what do you do Oh boy, I'd say at this point, I mean, I I can't do anything to tie up the tongue I'd have met. Well, could I try and? Oh, this is this is crazy, but could I try and grab the tongue and like wrap it around the pillar as best I can? Yeah, I yeah, I mean, it's it's currently flailing and it's not exactly focused on trying to get any of you, so you could probably grab it. All right, can I? I Mads, may I ask for your assistance in helping me yank this giant tongue around the pillar? Absolutely. All right. All right. And what? Wait. What is this? A pulsum tongue? Uh, yeah. This is a pulsum tongue. Okay. Thank God, because that is a plus one instead of a minus one. That puts me at a seven. Mixed oh, success. Cool. I also got a seven on my help out check. Okay. Okay. So. In that case, you're both exposed to danger, but you do succeed, correct? It seems to mm-hmm. be the case. So he's Okay. So yeah. you you both just start arm wrestling this tongue around the uh the pillar. Uh, mm-hmm. unbeknownst to you, or maybe unbeknownst to you, the tongue has actually kind of got like um shark skin. It's uh it's ribbed and not for anybody's pleasure. Oof. Uh, <laughs> oh. and so it it legitimately Wait. hurts to like wrap this thing around but you do get it you do actually get it around the pillar and more or less start tying it off all right mark a harm for shark skin yeah oh. yep all right shark tongue for both of you mads right. you're looking pretty bad oh boy <sighs> can we get out of here soon? let's see okay oh, no. i i think we're 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 near in kill shot area here i still have a blowtorch and there's two guns I yep. think I I toss the blowtorch in the mouth of the mimic, and one of the two of you who hopefully still have the gun, I shoot uh, it, shoot at it. Okay, yeah. uh, so give me an act under pressure to toss it well, and then a uh a shoot some torch, blow some torch, blow some torch. Blow some torch. I'm going to use my final allowed point of luck. I am as okay. well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because okay. So there are two twelves for both. Yep. Yep. So you guys it's too uh, cool to you, not. You, you, yep. I agree. You toss the blowtorch in, and as it's sailing through, kind of going down the thing's gullet, uh, just absolute perfect shot straight through the <coughs> the gas tank on the thing, and the the just top of the chest gets blown backwards. The tongue, uh, well, is now in two. And everything is kind of on fire, and you didn't realize you got knocked on your butt. It's just kind of the, like, split second later, what happened? You're all on your ass, except for maybe Arnie, you're fine. You're far enough away. Uh, but before you is kind of this 
shaking, smoldering, gnashing chest, tongueless now, and more or less completely, uh, I mean, it's, it's slowly burning to death as it can no longer reach you. It's lost its only means of movement, uh, and it is just shrieking and hissing. Uh, Arnie, you do hear there are sounds from behind you. The, uh, the people coming after you may be on their way. Hmm. Hmm. And, okay. There, there, so the, the mimic mouth was open. There's nothing behind it. So there is, nope. this was like a one-way entrance, right? Uh, you don't know. The rest of the room is actually really dark. Okay. I, I point my flashlight behind the mimic since we're kind of probably in that general area. I, I point it behind. I try and search the walls, see if there's any other thing of note. There is exit. no wall. Interesting. So, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to be unapologetic with my influences here. You know that part in control where you're in kind of the lower basements and it's just this weird endless basement building that extends on for a while? Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's that. Like, this is as big as the cubicle room above and you don't know what else is out there. Hear, hear me out. Um, I have a feeling maybe we've broken the spell and maybe the drones behind us are now nice and normal back to <laughs> normal people. Okay. Oh, that is a risk. Okay. That is, that is a risk. the feeling I have. I would like to um, <laughs> t trust my gut. <laughs> can, can I trust okay. my gut on figuring out if the giant army of people stomping towards us are in fact um on our sure. side is that a role or is... yeah it's a trust your gut i well okay. it's a, well it's a six let's see <laughs> uh, so my instinct leads me into danger it doesn't mean leads me in the wrong place it leads me into a spot that will cause me the most danger uh you get a bad vibe from the weird endless basement and you feel like you you saw a staircase going upwards. So you think you can probably get out of this building and through whatever is behind you. Great. All right. Franklin says, you guys can check that out if you want. I saw that stairway back there. I'm headed out. And Franklin starts, oh boy. starts running. Uh, uh, um, oh, he's not coming back, is he? Yeah, I start heading up the stairs as much as I, I, I full goal heading up the stairs until I see something. You I know, think, I this think is we should probably just wait here though. until he opens that door, sees the other side, and comes back down. I, I, oh, yeah, I go up. I go all the way up. I open the door. I, I mean, my gut told okay. my character so, that I'm supposed to leave this way. I am not going to so not trust So you him. go that way, and there's about, I'm going to say, seven or, or eight of these kind of dronish employee, employees that are coming down the hallway. Uh, speed walking, not unlike you were speed walking earlier. Do they uh, look angry? in your general direction? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I'd say at that point, he would close the door and say, nope, nope, not friendly, not friendly, not friendly, not friendly. And he starts running into the endless void, speed walking like he did earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing Franklin return, Mads is going to shout while you're still in the distance coming down from the staircase. Happened to have your deepest desire being escaped yet? Hap was that? Happen to have your deepest desire being escape yet? I mean, you know, if either of you just really wanted it. I, I, I want, at this point, I want nothing more. I want this thing dead. I want nothing more than to have this die and to Oh, leave. it's dead. It's Good. dead at this point. Like, Good. it's just been burning this whole time. Good. I figured, uh, yes, I would like nothing more than to leave. As you share your either. desire with me. Uh, you see a, a, a flutter of energy, a, a purple radiance emerging from Mads. Hey, how badly do you want it? Tell me a secret. The bigger the secret, the more powerful the spell. I secretly have a crush on Arnie. As soon as you finish that sentence, immediately an elevator appears. <laughs> <laughs> or you know what actually i'll give it to the dm yeah. i shouldn't have said yeah. that's very prescriptive uh so not so much an elevator but it is a portal with pants just kind of roped up dangling out of it are the, the pants like tied together in the shape of a heart yeah uh <laughs> maybe maybe a couple of them oh that'll be all right all right 
I uh, uh, I look at Arnie. I love you too, bro. Let's let's head. Up I I put my hand out to grab to grab your hand. <laughs> let's jump in. Oh, I'm I'm so torn. I feel like my characters moved beyond. I think so too. It's you do it. Yeah. You do you. <laughs> I I think. I brush the hand aside and like walk past and go into the portal. Uh, uh, Franklin uh, looks back at the Mads, door. Hmm. Mads tries not to leave Franklin whole, uh, hanging and just goes and grabs the hand. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Franklin goes in. So, uh, so the portal's up above. You, it's a rope, uh, like a dangling rope. Oh yes, uh, we'll climb then. Yeah, so, uh, and on the other side, you, you feel something kind of tub- tugging you up, and uh, as you emerge through the portal, you are in uh, Mads's uh, show, circus, whatever. Mm-hmm. And, it's uh, called the Witchlight Circus. Yes, mm. so uh, your, your other fellow, fellow circus employees, your friends, your coven, uh, they have uh, put together a, a summoning circle to summon you back. Uh, they... I don't know, felt the, felt the tug and went to pull and they uh, pulled you all to safety. So as, as soon as we make our way onto the other side, I'm going to look up and across and go, oh, Madam Gildenhoof, you picked the perfect time. And I think that's just curtains. Yeah. Well, all right. <laughs> hell yeah. That was fun as hell. That was great. I'm Should- glad. I, I really liked it. Should we do a real quick, since it's such a clean way to end the session, should we do the end of session wrap-up thing? Or do, should we sure. just call it? Because basically... Yeah, at the, might as well. At, I think we'll just run through it quickly. At the end of a session, normal session, in a, like a prolonged campaign, what you do is you ask a couple questions. The more questions that you can answer yes to, the more extra experience you would get, your character would get, and you would, you know, level up faster that way so the first of the which first of which is did we conclude this current mystery i think that that one's up to dm discretion but i yes, guess maybe it comes 100%. to the question of like do we fully know what happened was it that people were being transformed into money which was then fed to the giant monster was that the whole uh, so I the the deeper mystery was I was making a cryptocurrency gag. I I, I assume there were giant sarcophaguses. <laughs> uh, the next question being, did we save someone from certain death or worse? That one I don't know. Someone. Uh, I mean, yeah, technically everybody that hadn't been replaced with a mimic up there is now safe. Okay. All right. What was I right? Was I right? Out of curiosity, were the drones good? If no, went back. Oh, not even remotely close. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, this one's weird for a one-off. Did we learn something new and important about the world? I we, it, it you. I'd imagine for most first one-offs and stuff, the answer is yes, because we learned everything that we learned today was new. Uh, and then the final thing: Did we learn anything new and important about any of the hunters? Mm-hmm. I think Franklin learned his true feelings, and I think yep. <laughs> I think that um, Arnie learned his true worth. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think I agree. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, if you get one or two yes answers, mark one experience. If you get three or four, you would mark two. Theoretically, that's how that would normally work. And that's the end of a normal session is what happens there. But since it was a one-off, we did it. We've done it. Yep. Congratulations. You are all. welcome you are welcome to reuse these characters, but without any levels accrued or luck lost uh, at any other point. And we're just going to keep doing one-offs for a while until we actually decide to do something more permanent. So, hell yeah. Yeah. But this was fun. Thank you, by the way, for yeah. putting together all of the assets in the session. Yeah, huge huge thank you. yeah it was fun. Yeah, huge. Big, big time fun. Love it. I love Monster. I don't know what it is, but it feels like every time we do group play like Project Zomboid, I always end up without pants. It's, I mean, I think <laughs> you need true. to examine inward on that one. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't tr- outwards. Wait, it's true. I will say I did call the belt being the thing that gets shot. So I guess yeah, I did it to I, you here. <laughs> yeah, I, I did not do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just, there's something about uh, Monster of the Week in specific being like kind of this collaborative storytelling thing. Like it's more of a yeah. b- like bounce. I like the, obviously the game master has their idea. They, they steer 
the vast majority of it, but like that bouncing back, it's more of a like, wouldn't this be a funny answer to this question? Posing it to the, so the nice. game master and having like it pulls a little bit of weight off in that way where it's like it's more of a I, I think don't they have to roll anything. Yeah, the game master doesn't have to roll oh, anything. Yeah, yeah. They can like it feels like you can take uh answers from the players more and it like fits with the system it's just just good i like it a lot 